How's it going, all my fellow Greeblies? I'm not gonna lie, I actually had a little thing, and then I like started talking, but my microphone got unplugged, so that that wasn't supposed to happen. I'd like to I'd like to formally apologize for that. Uh, I'd like to formally apologize to all my little Greeblies in chat. Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome to chat. Why does my window keep OBS keeps OBS keeps moving to the right? It doesn't want to it doesn't want to sit in my monitor correctly. Hello, everyone. Welcome to stream. I obviously saw Wisteria in chat. I was responding to him. Um, we can get Wisteria banned because um, I hate him. Hey, Radom, Saxophone, Green Team Gaming, Wide Trapeze Enjoyer. Um, I assume is that Trapeze or Trapeze? Trapeze? I don't know. I don't know what you're trying to say there. Spinosaurus, what's up? How's everybody doing in chat today? Hi. Hello. Hey, JK. Tank Commander, my favorite lurker in chat. Weed knows best fucking username of all time. I grabbed my headphones instead of a mouse and I started to click. Dude, uh, sometimes you have that. It's like the pat your head and rub your tummy thing. Actually, I can do that. I can rub my tummy and pat my head at the same. Like, I have no issues with this. But, like, yeah, sometimes you forget, like, what your hand's doing and you just do shit. Uh, what's up, Polsky in chat? Everybody, thank you so much for making it out. So, yeah, tonight's a very simple stream. Like, I I, I mentioned in the previous stream that I, uh, on Tuesday, or no, Thursday, excuse me, because today's Saturday. Um, I mentioned on Thursday that I was like, yeah, like, I, I want to do, uh, I want to continue our Call of Duty World at War playthrough with Big Fish 821. Um, but I messaged Big Fish and he was like, oh, like, I'm gonna be busy, sorry. And I was like, oh, okay. So then I was deciding what to stream today. I thought a lot about continuing Half-Life, but I was like, eh, like, I don't really want to stream the same thing twice in a row. Like, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but me personally, I was like, I don't know, I don't want to just, like, stay on... I don't know, it just didn't feel right to me. So I was like, well, I, we're, we're not gonna do that. So instead, we are playing Battlefield Five because I need to be on that fucking Battlefield Five grind. I don't know about you guys, but yes, I still play this game, and yes, I enjoy it. So, Battlefield Five, as you may or may not know, has these weekly missions, Tides of War. So even though the game is obviously, like, not supported anymore, they still do these, like, weekly challenges. Although I imagine that they're on, like, a rotation and whatnot. And, I mean, yeah, we have until April 11th to do these. So, you know, they just started. But what's great about these is that these actually aren't that difficult. Like, this one is literally play one round of any game mode. And then this one is capture five, uh, capture five objectives, complete five squad orders, kill or kill twenty people. Like they're they're really easy to do. This actually might this one might suck. Inflict twenty damage using aircraft. That might be really hard for us. Um, inflict two inflict five hundred damage using ground vehicles. That we can very much do, obviously, as a tank focused one. So yeah, like these aren't difficult. These are actually really easy. Actually, this one is perfectly suited to us. Kill twelve enemies using the Lee Enfield number four. Uh, Bren or the M1928A1. Obviously, I'm going to use the Lee Enfield number four because, you know, I'm a one-note character. Um, and then at the end of it all, we get 100 Battlefield currency. Now, why am I on this grind, you might ask? Well, because I fucking love tank combat in this game. I unironically do. Like, I think as far as, like, a non mil sim, like, just an arcade tank combat experience, multiplayer tank combat experience, I really love the gameplay of Battlefield Five. It's actually, like, just the tanks are easy to control, Things just work, and it's fun, and like capturing points, helping your team. There's infantry, so you're killing infantry, you're helping your team with stuff. Like You just feel like a team player, and one good tank player on a team can really change the tide of the battle in this game. I just really like Battlefield V's tank gameplay, and I'm not ashamed to admit that. So, um, yeah, I have been on the tank grind, and I love, as well, I love all of the different customizations customization options that you have for the tanks in this game i think unironically i think this like dressing system i think this is better than war thunder which i know is crazy because it's like whoa like war thunder literally lets you place stuff where Thanks, friends. When did I stop talking? <laughs> I noticed the chat was going by faster and faster, and I was...
Hi, I'm down here. Where's my camera? Where's my camera? Uh, hello. Whoa, my OBS is like dying. Wait, what the hell? What happened to my camera? Hold on, friends. A lot is dying right now. What the fuck? Turn this off. Turn it back on. No, that's not working either. Uh, okay, hold on. Chat, what ha what did you what did you guys do? Chat, what happened? Oh, because I unplugged my camera. That's why I'm stupid. <laughs> I did that temporarily, um, but it's also not turning back on, and that's a problem. Hello? Camera, why are you doing this? <sighs> this is all your fault. This is all your guys' fault. I blame you. I blame each and every one of you. Hold on, what if we did uh, your mom real quick? Uh, what if we did this, and then we did this, like that. Hi, oh there we are, hello. Is the frame rate bad, whoa. What, what, what did I do, what happened? What did I, what did I do? Chat, what hat? What is it buggy for you guys too? Like, does it is it just me or does it look like really uh, it looks really like bad? OBS is becoming dead. It is. Bro said it's broke. What did we do? No, you guys, you guys did this, not me. Um, yeah, I went under the desk to just unplug the uh my microphone and plug it back in from the backside, not from underneath here. And I thought maybe that would help, but it has not helped actually. In fact, it has made things worse. Um. Is that happening for you guys too? Is it just like... Stream is imploding right before our eyes? It, it is imploding, but this is like a controlled implosion. This is like when scientists like make a star go supernova so they can harness the energy from it. That's what we're doing right now. The star is going supernova, but like... The world is not ending quite yet. We're not we're not dead here. Um, on, the, on the bright side, the, uh, the camera seems... Or sorry, the microphone seems to be working again. Hooray. Yeah, it's a bit laggy. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm wondering why I did that. Can't have shit in Netta's land. No, we can't. We really can't. That was my mouse. I just unplugged my mouse. That wasn't meant to happen. Which one uses my camera? It's this one, right? I know it's this one. Oh, this one. Wait, hold on. Never mind the epic guitar solo that you're currently being blessed with right now. Uh, hold on, da da. Open this up. Do the camera again. Properties. Deactivate. Activate. Right. Or this. And then do this. There we go. Okay, I knocked. Okay. Yeah, so the camera. Ugh. Let me. Allow me to explain. Is my microphone still working? Okay. The camera is its own. I didn't even, like, fuck with it, but I guess I must have bumped it or something. Like, I bumped the USB plug while during everything and so it it got all glitchy i never unplugged it just wasn't like it wasn't happy so i just i i fixed it so now we're good we're smooth smooth sailing hello everyone <laughs> what what if i do this and then i crash the stream okay well that solved everything so yeah i think this this usb the usb type b plug on the back of my microphone is um, not helping. So I'm just going to stare feverishly at the microphone bar to make sure I'm still producing sound as I explain to you what I was just explaining. So, welcome back. Thank you very much, Weed Nose. I appreciate it. Edda, can you join the game so I can snipe you? Give me a minute, Wisteria. We're going to do that, okay? We're, we, we just had to fix... We had to fix the entire stream because it imploded. Okay, so, as I was saying... <laughs> as I was saying... So... I like Battlefield 5 a lot. I like, I like the, uh, the tank gameplay of Battlefield 5 a lot. I think, first of all, it's a tank game, or, you know, it's a game where you can play as a tank, and there's infantry. I instantly love that, that we can shoot infantry, we have friendly infantry that we can support and help capture objectives. Like, that's great. Um, I, and I think the gameplay is actually good. For, like, an arcade experience, it's Battlefield. Like, we're not expecting, you know, like, realism here. It's not a, it's not a milsim. But for what what the game is trying to do, I think it does it really well. And I, I love the, the tank gameplay of Battlefield 1 as well. 
and I was super excited for them to make an, another battlefield along the same lines, but with World War II tanks. So I was always, like, sunken into the idea of uh, Battlefield 5's tank combat. I just, I love it very, very much. Um, so I'm addicted to that. And, of course, my tanks need to have the latest and greatest um, turret dressings and hull dressings and customization. And that's what we're grinding for today, chat. That's, that's the whole point of the goddamn stream. How long are we? We're 15 minutes in, and I'm finally explaining to you the point of the stream. We are grinding these challenges, these weekly challenges, so we can get in-game currency, so we can buy more, like, turret dressings and hull dressings and customize my tanks. Because also what I was saying before my mic cut out, I also really genuinely love the, uh, the uh, customization system for the tanks in this game. Like, I think, um, I think it's better than War Thunder, which I know is heresy. I, I mentioned that when the, my mic cut out. I don't know if that caught up. But I think it's better than War Thunder, because War Thunder will let you place items individually, and that's great. But you'll get one item at a time. I really like the... I, I'm perfectly okay with, like, preset batches. You know, these, these dressings, these preset collections of stowage and decoratives. And then you just mix and match the ones that you want. No different than customizing the outfit on a character model, right? Like... I really like this approach, and I think, again, for like a Battlefield-type game, for a casual thing, like for what this is, I think this works really, really well, and I really like it. And I find it genuinely fulfilling to grind currency so I can buy the little decoratives that I want, and the skins and everything too, or, you know, the, the uh, paint jobs and everything. Like, I, I unironically love the way Battlefield Five handles tanks and tank customization. And then same thing with the trees. Like, they kind of do a... a uh, a World of Tanks type thing, which can lead to a lot of cursed stuff, but I do like the idea of, like, the different trees. And you go down the trees, and you can customize it to be, like, you know, different things. You can have Zimrid, and you can have the, the... You can turn it into a Pencil 4 Age. Like, I like this. I like it a lot. To summarize, I like it. So we're going to be playing through the game so that we can customize... We can get more things to put onto our beautiful little tanks. Okay, so is that cool? Do you guys do you guys like that? Does that make sense? Me too, Ed320, but I just got this game on PC, so my tanks are all nakey. Well, Wisteria, we can help you fix that with with today's stream. Um, yeah, I literally never played the Pumo, so I'm like level zero on it. Um, yeah, I mostly... So my goal, my grand goal... You guys can't see actually how much um, money I have. I have 21,000... Battlefield monies in the bank, as you can see. 21,000 Battlefield monies in the bank. And so, speaking of money in the bank, holy shit, thank 20 you so check much for run from on, to Zeneco oh, you We grind dude. outfits for up, tanks. Uh, YouTube stuff. I have to open up the stream elements thing, and then hopefully I catch it in time so that it reads out your donation with the text-to-speech. Maybe not. Maybe it didn't. I am so sorry that it didn't do that. Um... What was the donation? Let's see. Hi. Hey, Tessanekos. One Once again, the, the number one donator of the channel, donating 20 of the Czechoslovakian currency that I still have not bothered to learn. Thank you so much for the donation, uh, Tessa. I'm going to keep calling you Tessa, okay, buddy? Uh, we grind in outfits for tanks. Yes, that is literally what we're doing. We're unironically grinding outfits for our tanks. Um, the TTS is very loud. Oh, shit. Sorry, guys. Wait, did you guys hear that? But I didn't. Oh, wait. That's actually pretty awesome. Uh, let me lower the volume of that then just a little bit. I'll try that. Somebody donate. Somebody give me more money again. So <laughs> somebody donate again so we can test that. Um, I lowered the volume of the, the TTS and everything just a little bit. That actually, you know what? I just now like thought about that. Yeah, you guys can probably hear it, but I can't. I just got a bit defender add on this. God damn it. I'm trying to play music for fuck's sake. TTS jump scare? Oh, okay, wow. So yeah, you guys can hear it, but I can't. <laughs> that actually makes a lot of sense now that I think about it. Um, okay. So let's get going. Oh, actually, well, no, all right, hold on. I wanted to explain. So I have 21,000 Battlefield coins. My goal is to get 60,000 because I would like to purchase in the, uh, in the assignment? No, armory, obviously, I think. Yeah, armory, yes. There are... Uh, bundles and things hold on i think it's in bundles i think there is a bundle that i really want that has a lot of cool things look out or maybe it is in no it's, i don't think it's vehicles i think it is a bundle um one of these bundles i really like is it the big game hunting one? Oh, this one you can only get with the cre premium currency but I, I want this so bad dude this freaking 
chassis and turret dressings look so cool for the uh, for the Type 97. I want this so bad. This looks really good. But you can only buy this with the Battlefield coins. So that's you got to spend real money for that, sadly. Um, oh, this one. The Untamed Wilderness. This is 60,000 doubloons. And we get this, which is a pretty awesome dressing for the Sherman. The only problem I have is I hate how the, the the extra spare wheel on the front here is some random road wheel from like a Jeep or something, and it's painted like bright ass yellow. That kind of bothers me. I, I'm okay if it's like a Jeep wheel, but I don't know why it's painted bright yellow. It just, it really is actually quite off-putting. But I love the rear. This looks fucking sick. The turret dressing looks awesome. And I love, it adds the extended fenders of the horizontal volume spring suspension Shermans, and also, actually, uh, Ford also did this on all Ford-produced Shermans. Ford always had the extended fenders, even though Ford, like, this would be like a Ford Sherman. Ford uh, did not produce Shermans long enough to experience HVSS or any of that, so uh, Ford had an initial batch of, like, 3,000 Shermans, and then they stopped because uh, Ford was a uh, a pacifist and he didn't want to build tanks he wa he wanted to build engines and and then they, bu they built planes so I don't know Ford dropped out of the Sherman program pretty early on and so there's only like 3,000 Shermans that were ever built by Ford but all 3,000 of them have the the extended fenders even though uh, they're an earlier model or whatever so that's pretty cool and I like that they added that but they also don't give you HVSS so you can't even I don't know man get ad blocker I do have ad blocker but YouTube is getting better and better about my ad blocker like not working anymore um, so yeah, I want to get 60,000 battle coins, battlefield coins, so I can unlock this dressing. But there's also more. There's a couple of things in the vehicle tab that I really want. Oh yeah, the ink and armor collection is really cool. Oh, actually, no, this is just camos. I think it's the cavalry standards collection that I want. Uh, no, not this one. These are all these are all just camos. I want dressings, to be honest. Um, oh, is it all dressed up? Oh yeah, it's this one. Yeah, column leader for the tiger. This is a sick sick dressing i want this so bad but again this is like special coins you know and this for the churchill this looks really cool i like both and look there's a bike on the back like that's so neat i know i, I think battlefield i think the team at dice did a really good job with the stowages and everything i think these look really cool so this is sadly premium currency but if you may notice this week's mission our reward is a hundred premium currency so if you do what nine of these and they all reward you because some of them don't reward you with the premium currency some of them reward you with like the silver currency then um yeah anyway we've been going for 22 minutes and i haven't even played the damn game so we're gonna play the game um because that's how this works so the first challenge we have to do is literally just play a match of a game i'm gonna try to join a server that um by the way you know i made a comment earlier about how this game was like supposedly dead um no it's not look how many fucking servers there are that are full up um, big European audience, it looks like. Lots of German servers. I'm gonna try to join a game that is that has a couple slots so that you guys can join if you so desire. Um, I prefer Strategic Conquest because you can play with tanks. So, Panzerstorm, Strategic Conquest, great ping because it's a German server. This works for me. It's actually, it looks like it's a DICE uh, original server, so we're gonna do this. Damn, these dressings look hella good. Though, I agree, that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, I, I really think, I actually genuinely think that, um, like, Battlefield knocked it out of the park, or, you know, the team at DICE uh, did a really good job with it so yeah i mean you can call me a normie all you want but i i do like um i like battlefield 5 the way battlefield 5 does tanks and i'm able to appreciate it the same way i appreciate girls in panzer it's like it's not realistic and i know it's not but for what it is for what it's trying to be it does a really really good job and so yeah i feel the same way about battlefield um so i think i'll keep some music going on in the background just a little bit uh, we might actually, I might loop this just a little bit. I might loop this track here for a little while. So obviously, if we can play in a tank, we're going to. Tiger. So our first challenge to solve is literally just play a round of any game mode. And so I am more than happy. I am more than happy to do that. And this is this is the stream. If you'd like to join, obviously, if you find my server, then you are free to join and stream snipe and do whatever you want. Um, but this is it. This is this is stream vibes today. This is, it is, it is a, uh, it is a chill, a chill situation, a chill scenario. I'm going to put this up here, I think, so you guys can see, like, my ammo counter and all that down here. Um, and, yeah, this this is stream vibes. Like, this is literally what we're doing today. So I hope you guys are excited for this. I wonder why is it only German servers? Pretty funny, though. I don't know. I think the Germans just like this game. I think the Germans just have a thing for World War II. I don't know why. I can't possibly explain why the Germans might um, have a thing for World War II. But um, such is how it goes, I suppose. I'm watching over backup Wi-Fi. Thank you. I appreciate you uh, tuning into the backup Wi-Fi so you can experience this stream. Um, 
There's a slight conflict with the music, but I think we're good now. Oh, yeah, we got a fellow tiger behind us. Hello, hello, tiger enjoyer. I would have spawned in the Panzer IV, but I don't want to die, so we're going to do the tiger just for now. Um, I do really like the Panzer IV. My best game ever was in a Panzer IV so far. And not even, like, tank game. Like, my best game of Battlefield V ever. I still have a screenshot. I went 64-0 and zero on Aerodome. I spawned in a Panzer IV at the very beginning of the match, and I just, like, held. And that was one of those games where, like, one good tank player changed the entire me. Me being the good tank player. Uh, one good tank player changed everything. Like, I just, I held the point... The enemy took the point back from us a couple times, but then I was there to help the team push and take it back. Like, I was defensively helping the team, and I was offensively helping the team, and it was just such a good game. And yeah, I racked up those kills. I know why, because I'm German. <gasps> hey, Beck in chat! What's up, Beck? Good to see you, little buddy. My Wi-Fi I think my Wi-Fi just crashed. Rest in peace, saxophone enjoyer. Can we get some... Uh, can we get some Fs in chat for... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, I was not paying attention. He thinks he's cool. We got him. That is such a goofy item. It's literally like this game's equivalent of a bayonet, but for tanks. Oh, we killing that guy? We got that guy. Good shit. Fuck him. Fuck him and his bitch ass. I have two different configurations that I play with my tiger. This one is I've got, like, the desert camo, and then I've got the, um... Oh, I love I like that camo. That's a cool that's a cool winter camo for the tiger. Um, I've got this one which is desert camo, and then I'm using the uh, the um, last tiger turret dressing, which you get just from beating the campaign. And then the bottom dressing I actually bought, um, not with real money. I haven't spent any real money on this game. I I've, I've grinded for everything. Whoa, shit! What did, what just happened? Something just went right through that barn right over our heads. Uh, okay, but and then I have a second tiger that I like to use, like a second configuration of tiger cosmetics. Whoa, Sherman, that I like to use, which is literally, um, it's the last tiger, like body dressing, and then um, the patrol turret dressing. Something is hitting me hard. Oh, there's a greyhound. Lol, get wrecked. Ow, another greyhound. Oh no, that guy. Oh, we could have killed him. Hold on. There we go. Okay, yeah, no, I'm unironically getting shot from somewhere. Oh. Hello? Oh, that guy. I saw him. Chad, did you see him? Fuck me. God, I hate planes. I hate planes. I hate Cass. I fucking hate Cass. No! I hate Cass, dude. Ugh. I was gonna fucking repair. I was gonna run over to the damn repair station. Planes in this game are so fucking bad. What game is this? Probably Enlisted. Um, yeah, this is Enlisted. That's what this game is, guys. Uh, I'm also gonna use... No, actually, hold on. We're gonna roll out here. Alright, hold on. This ain't fitting the vibes no more. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna lie to you, friends. How about this, huh? How about some of this? Uh, da 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 Bolt action. The... Car 98K. Yes, chat. I'm a LARPer. You can go ahead and laugh. I am a LARPer. Yes, every time I play Assault, I even switch from the Bazooka to the Panzerfaust because, like, depending on what team I'm on, it's like, if I'm going to go for Germany now, we're going to go for the... Um, sorry, hold on. I always play with the Gewehr 43 and then the P38, and that looks good. Okay. Yes, chat. I'm a LARPer. You can go ahead and laugh. This is Hell Let Loose. Yeah, this is the new squad update. I mean, sorry, um... Uh, squad 44. This is the new Squad 44 update. Wisteria is coming for you. Is Wisteria on the other team? Alright, I'm playing some Ostfront, so I'll check in every now and then. Thanks, Green Team Gaming. We love you. Fortnite? No, Chunk Spunk. This is not Fortnite. This game is many things, but it is not Fortnite. Oh, God. Ah! Help! The sniper's about... Yeep! Jump in the crater! Ah, jump in the crater! Put that there. Hello! Whoa! Ah! <laughs> I tried. <laughs> no, I actually didn't try at all. How is it not Fortnite? Ch Chunk, it's not Fortnite, dude. Chat, can we? Can somebody tell Chunk, Ed, I want to play with you? If you can find, if you rewind the stream and find the server that I'm in, um, you can play with me. That's that's the uh, that's your reward. You got to do some detective work, pal. You gotta you gotta work for your for your pay around here. And your payment is getting to play with the streamer. Hold on. Is that a... That's a vehicle, isn't it? I'm gonna die. 
It wasn't a vehicle, it was just a machine gunner. Fuck. Chat, I'm dying because I'm just in the middle of a field. Hold on. Roblox looking pretty good today. Guys, this is not Roblox. It's not Fortnite and it's not Roblox, but it is Squad Hell Let Loose and Enlisted all rolled up into one game. All right, we're going to learn from our mistakes and we're going to spawn in the middle of the field again. But this time we're going to go to a house. Run! Run! Get inside! Oh. We're okay. I got you, Mwaha. That was you, Wisteria? Wait, Wisteria is on the enemy team, is he not? Wait, is he? Where is he? Where is your bitch at? Where are you? There he is, Wisteria Flowers! I see his ass! What the fuck? Man, this is horse shit. I'm being followed. I missed. That guy died, I think. Oh, no, he's not. He's not dead. He's just prone. There we go. I thought so. Whoa! I got grub stopped. I got I got killed by grub style, boys. I got grub stopped. Is this COD World at War? No, that was the original idea, though. I did want to play it. Oh, I didn't put a fucking spawner in the house. I should have done that. Chat, we're losing horrendously. We're actually losing really bad right now. Chat, what can, what can we do about this? One good tank player can turn the tide of the game. I've said this before. Okay, yeah, this is bad. We need to we need to put a new. <gasps> 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 I don't think spawning at my uh, at my little my little plant is gonna work anymore, chat. Just win the game, it's that easy. You know what? That's a good point, actually. I think maybe you're onto something. I think I'll probably just win the game. Let's try that, huh? Let's give that a shot, shall we? Finally, my Wi-Fi is back. Yo, saxophone. Can we get W's in chat for saxophone? Did you guys actually listen to me when I said to put F's in chat for saxophone? Did anybody actually? Do you guys actually give a shit what I say? Do you guys actually care at all? Are any of you real? <laughs> Are any of you listening right now? Are any of you- Whoa! Hey, I shot him. I got- Look, damage orders completed. Look at that, guys. That was a challenge. I just completed a challenge right there. That was pretty good, I think. Hold on. We have to actually, uh... We have to actually try a little bit. Hey, look! Polish in chat, I think. Alright, as much as I love- I love piloting tigers. I don't like just sitting around in tigers. But hold on, we got. Oh, I see a guy. That's not working. Chat, that is not working. Is the charging handle for the Kavera 43 on the left side? It is. That's weird. Actually, I guess that's not that weird. Because you would hold it and you would. with your left hand. That's actually an interesting conundrum. Yeah, your operating hand, should it be the left or the right hand? That's an interesting question. Alright, I don't know what the hell's going on over there. We have to get a bit closer. The scope is nice, but it's it could be a lot better. Man, we are really getting our asses kicked. Hey chat, I'm still I'm still positive in my KD ratio, I'll have you know. We had a good run in that tiger, as short as it was. Hello. That's my dead teammate. <laughs> That's my teammate writhing on the ground. That is not an enemy. If this were, if this were real life, I still would have shot them. And then I get all of the uh, the medals that come with that. <laughs> come and get me if you dare. Ah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come and get me if you dare. Gets fucking domed. G43 is designed so you should open the bolt and load your stripper clips with the left hand. Yeah, I figured. Because that's like... I literally did that motion where I was like, oh yeah, you would want to... Your, op your, your operating hand would be the left hand. Which, yeah, like I think in the modern day that feels weird, but... <laughs> but back then that would have been fine. Hold on, chat. We, we have maximum trolling potential. Please be in first person and not see me, please. Please, 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 please. Chat, I just want to troll. I just want to troll, please. Don't see me, infantry. Boop. Fuck. Oh, he's going to go to the resupply. Oh. Let's keep moving. Oh, don't see me, please. Ah, oh, they see me. <gasps> All right, we have to just go... Ter glancing blow, it's fucking heat. It doesn't ricochet. I mean, it does, but... <gasps> we killed him! 
Oh my god, I didn't realize he was that low on health. Okay, shit. And there's a Greyhound over there too. I don't think we can do much against that because he's really fast. <gasps> Ow! Oh, chat, we might not survive this. Oh! I got Greyhounded. But hey, we killed the Sherman. Look at that, huh? Wasn't that easy? We just furied that guy. Remember when the when they uh, they added playable infantry to War Thunder? Yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, this is the War Thunder update. Enlisted when? Ah, bro, I don't know if I want to stream Enlisted. I really don't. I'll do a Tank Enthusiast reacts to Enlisted one day, be, like out of principle, because you know you guys are ask you guys would ask for it, and it's like ah, you know I gotta cover the game just to say that I have. I have played Enlisted before. Um, I think it was me. Me and a couple of friends actually hopped into it. It wasn't. It literally wasn't for a video. I think. I had uh, some friends who totally independently reached out to me, and they're like, hey, we downloaded this game, like, it's called Enlisted, and we were having a lot of fun with it, you should join us. And then me and my other buddy were like, oh, like, the friend group is getting into this game, so let's play it. And I was like, oh yeah, like, this is a great opportunity to try Enlisted. And man, I played it, and I hated it. I thought it was terrible. I hated every second of it. I did not have any fun. There were some neat things going on where it's like, oh, like, that's kind of interesting. But I really don't like Enlisted. Like, and I, this isn't even like a Gaijin thing. This is just straight up, like, I just think it's not a fun game. It's not, I don't like it. Uh, that being said, it's also made my Gaijin, so I also have that going against it. But yeah, maybe hot take, but I really don't like, I just do not like Enlisted. I think it's a shit game. I've heard it's bad now, which isn't surprising since it's Gaijin. Yeah, I got a video on my recommended on YouTube that was like, why Enlisted is like falling apart and this, that, the, like, a, the Enlisted community being like, no, please go, don't betray our trust, Gaijin. All these people downloading a Gaijin game for the first time and they don't come from War Thunder, so they don't know what they're getting into. And then they get surprised when Gaijin totally butt fucks them. But you know, it is, it just kind of is how it is. The only neat part about Enlisted is the time to kill. Bolt action rifles can kill one hit most of the time. There's so many other games that you can get that experience out of, though. That's the thing. Like, I don't think that's enough to warrant me to continue playing Enlisted. Then why are you playing? No, that's actually a good point. MM 106 in chat. 106 8 in chat. That is a, that is a good point. I hate Enlisted, and yet here I am playing it right now on on live stream. Um, look, you, you guys can call me a hypocrite all you want in chat. You can dox me. You can beat me up. You can break my nose. You can you can break my legs. You can do whatever you want. But just know that I stand by my principles. I also, my principles being that I have shit aim. Wait, uh, health. I need to pick up health from here. Can you actually get health with these? I don't think you can. I think it's just ammo. Yeah, fuck. What the hell? These sh these things should be like a universal resupply. Fuck! I was talking to chat! Those little vehicle repair stations should be a universal resupply. They should supply you with health and ammo. In Enlisted, one person playing as a whole squad sounds like schizophrenia. That part of it actually wasn't like that bad in my opinion. Um, like that was not the part that I had the biggest problem with in Enlisted. I actually thought it was like kind of a creative way to do lives and everything where it's like, oh yeah, like you play through every member of your squad and then when your whole squad dies, like you're done. That's like kind of creative. It's kind of neat. Like I, again, that's the thing where it's like, oh, like I get why they did that. Like that's kind of neat. Honestly, one of the biggest problems I had with Enlisted mostly playing it was just the map design. Once again, Gaijin is just awful at map design. And just like the maps are just not fun to play. And all the tank, you hop in a tank and there's only like one road you can go down. And then you die. It's like dying. You you die so fucking fast in a tank, because you just you're like, all right, well, all I'm gonna do is sit at the back of the map and plink, because that's like really all I can do. Which, granted, is basically what tanks were used for in real life. I missed that shot somehow. It's over. I missed again. It's Jover. <sighs> Don't kill me, please. He can't see me. Ugh. Switch to uh, ammo. Hit him. Ah. All right, that was my fault. He hit my tracks and my aim was all over the place. That was me. I was trying to run. I was trying to run away and shoot him at the same time, and you can't. You got to stand your ground. I was in a Panzer IV. I got scared. That's my fault, chat. That was me. I'll admit that was me being actually bad at the game right there. Wait, can I get revenge on him though? I don't think that I can. I don't know where he is. Was there a repair point back here at D what too as well? There was. I could have just turned. Well, turning around would not have been a good idea either. Yeah, I don't know. I think I just got fucked in that situation. Whoever shoots first is usually the winner of a tank engagement. We know this, chat, don't we? The tanks were horrible. Yeah. I uh, enlisted really did not did not do tanks very well, I feel like. You said that right as I loaded up enlisted and it just crashed. <laughs> oh, never mind. It's just taking three years to load. The, the snail is slow to do shit. I've been talking to somebody recently about 
some things. No, but I, I've, I've been talking to somebody who has had a lot of experience working with, like, they have a lot of friends and people that they've worked with in the past who either work at Gaijin currently or have worked at Gaijin. And, yeah, no, they are just, like, a genuinely incompetent company. Like, they actually just, like, don't know... Like, they actually just take forever to do shit. I cannot wait to do a Tank Enthusiast reacts to War Thunder because I was playing it on stream and just, like, offhandedly I was noticing so many things that I, like, really wanted to point out then and there, but I was like, no, no, no. Like, I need to save this for a Tank Enthusiast reacts to War Thunder. Um, and I'm going to work really hard to just rip that game apart, especially after the, the, world, the world of Tanks. Wait, did I say World of Tanks? I've been, I've been meaning War Thunder this whole time. When I played War Thunder on stream... I noticed so many things and wanted to say it, but I was like, no, 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 I'll save this for a Tank Enthusiast Rax to War Thunder. I'll save it for that. So I already have a lot of things that I want to say about War Thunder, about how much it gets wrong about tanks. And yeah, I just can't wait to do that. I cannot wait to rip War Thunder a new asshole in its portrayal of tanks, especially after the World of Tanks video, because... Um, when the World of Tanks video came out, there were so many people in the comments being like, this is why War Thunder is so much better. Like, yeah, like, clearly, you know, War Thunder dick riders. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to to pry that from their from their hands. Yo, Edda, what do you think about ships? Just wondering. Um, it's interesting that you would ask that question, actually. I have a pretty... I have a very nuanced opinion about ships. It's, you know, kind of like a bit of good, bit of bad... Uh, but mostly bad. I would say the majority of my opinion on ships comprises of... What are you shooting at? Uh, comprises of hatred, uh, resentment, um, disgust, probably, or some, some words I would use to describe it. But, you know, like, it's... I, I usually take, like... I take a pretty, like, middle-of-the-road approach to it, you know? Like, I don't... I'm, I don't like a hater or nothing, but... Yeah, just, you know, like, just absolute horrible, like, you know... If I saw a boat in real life, I would... I would sink it. Like, that kind of thing, you know? What have ships done to you? It's what they haven't done to me, Weed Knows, that you would want. That That's the bigger conversation we need to have here. I still like War Thunder more. I will admit, all right, I'll admit to my sins that playing War Thunder on stream, like, yeah, I had fun. I also, although, I will also say that I had fun playing World of Tanks for the World of Tanks video that I did, uh, the sponsorship video. I genuinely, like, once I learned the game, I genuinely had fun. And also, weirdly enough, I think the two games are actually, like, eerily similar in terms of how they play. Um, people go like, oh, health bars, health bar tank go. But actually, even in War in World of Tanks, you still have to know where to shoot. Like, because there is still, you do more damage if you hit, you know, the thinner plates, the weaker parts of armor. It's like lower glacius shots, mantlet shots, or not mantlet shots, I guess. But, like, the, the meta is still, like, the meta is the same almost in, in War Thunder. Like, aim for lower glacius, aim for the sides. Like, just the general rules are the same. But with War Thunder, you can get, you can, uh... You can get by with a lot more, like, cheeky shit in War Thunder than you can in World of Tanks. World of Tanks, your guns are never as accurate. Like, in War Thunder, your, game, your guns can be dead accurate. In World of Tanks, you always have, like, that little circle, that little sphere. So your shot can always veer a little bit left, a little bit right. So you never have, like, true precision aim in World of Tanks. Which can be quite frustrating, actually. It can be really annoying sometimes. Um, but yeah, like, generally speaking, like, they're both, like, games where you play as tanks. And... I found myself, like, my War Thunder training translated decently well into playing World of Tanks. However, that being said, I will say that for me personally, I do like War Thunder better. Like, I like the gameplay of War Thunder better. Um, to me, it's just, I it's what I'm used to. And then also, yeah, like, I do like the, um, the tanks are slower. They handle a bit more realistically. Um, I don't want to say, like, I don't want to, uh propagate the argument and the theory that like oh i like war thunder more than world of tanks because war thunder is realistic and and world of tanks is not i don't want to say that because that's first of all wrong war thunder is not realistic um but i suppose you could say it is more realistic than world of tanks but even then like you're you're really splitting hairs at that point and i've always said too i think the biggest problem with the biggest problem with War Thunder, but I think this is also I think this also applies to World of Tanks. My biggest problem with War Thunder is that they try to be a World of Tanks competitor. Like I think War Thunder should just fucking ditch World of Tanks and stop trying to compete with them. Like War Thunder should just be its own game. It frustrates me so much that War Thunder sees the free-to-play arcadey tank game 
in World of Tanks and goes, oh, like, we need to be that. It's like, no, you fucking don't. Please, like, please be your own thing. And I would argue that World of Tanks probably needs to do the same thing. Like, stop trying to stop trying to compete with War Thunder. Although, to be honest, World of Tanks seems like it's doing its own thing more successfully than War Thunder is. But I, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not a fucking expert. I'm just a random-ass dude. War Thunder is not competing with World of Tanks, though. So when I got sponsored for World of Tanks, they literally said in my contract, it was written in my contract for the sponsorship of World of Tanks, they said, do not talk about competitor games such as Crossout and War Thunder. They name-dropped War Thunder. So World of Tanks sees War Thunder as a competitor. They Like, they literally in a contract told me so. And I was contractually obligated to not mention War Thunder in that video. Which, by the way, was really difficult. <laughs> that was, like, by far the hardest part of filming that video. Also, in the contract for the World of Tanks video, they said, uh, please do not excessively swear. If you go back and you watch the World of Tanks sponsorship video, there are moments where I go, Ah, oh, gosh dang doodle. Because <laughs> I'm trying not to swear. <laughs> Why cross out? Because it's made by Gaijin. So, so yeah, not only that, like, Crossout's not even a tank game, but it's made by Gaijin, who is a, a competitor company. So not even, like, it's not even about War Thunder, it's just straight up, like, the game, like, Gaijin as a company, they see as, like, this rival. I haven't played Battlefield 5 in three years, now I'm going to just so I can play with you? Aw, oh, Beck, that's very sweet. Yeah, if you, if you guys have, I mean, this is, I'm not doing, like, any VCs or, like, like teamwork or nothing, but if you want to join just so you can, like, do that, holy that aim, thank you very much. Yeah, I take pride on my aim, especially with the Garand, because as we all know, the Garand has the worst sights uh, known to man. The Garand is universally hated for its, uh, its irons. Am I right, chat, or am I right? The joke is that the Garand actually had really, really good battle sights. Fuck me. I was not expecting that guy to just come around the corner. That makes sense. One game stays realistic and one game stays unrealistic? Well, I think War Thunder should be... Uh, and both, actually, again, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna pick sides here. Like, I think both games, World of Tanks and War Thunder, I think they should both be, like, they should lean into what they do good more, and they should be more experimental. Like, War Thunder should be... And War Thunder does an okay job of this, too, actually, I'll say. Like, introducing, like, weird game modes. Like, their, their, their April Fool's events are really cool. Like, the fact that they do... They do these April Fool's events to test out, like, new features they're adding, new concepts, da 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 Like, that's pretty cool, but I think War Thunder should be less afraid to do, like, more milsim type shit. I mean, I've always said that, you know, like, my biggest thing that I would do with War Thunder is add infantry, similar to the way that For Honor does it, where every player is, like, the, the, a tank, but then you have all these little AI gremlins running around, and the AI gremlins are constantly pushing towards, uh, like, points and whatnot. And just like how in For Honor, you can run... Hello. Hi. Mike cut again. Well, anyway, I was just saying that War Thunder should be like For Honor. <laughs> I'm just going to summarize it as that, and you guys are going to have to just know what I'm talking about. And then we get the chat delay. I'm going to... Is it like... Is it because the cord is pulled to... I think it's because the, the microphone there is just... It's not out. Put the damn tape. I'm not going to use... I don't need... I don't need no damn tape. Why did that not... Bro, that grenade literally just stuck to the wall. Damn. <laughs> Bad aim. All right, wait, Chad. Do we need to lock in? Mike, I'm not falling for that. Saying he saxophone joiner, I'm not falling for that. My mic looks fine. Saxophone, I'm not falling for it. Yeah, I think the cord the cord is just being pulled a little bit too tall. I just need to stop touching my microphone, which is a bad like tick that I have kind of. <laughs> Thank you Tessa for the donation again of more 20, 20 more. I'm going to have so much technical fucking currency. Dude. This is ETA Mike for, uh, trying not to die. Mike trying not Mission to die. Impossible. impossible. Yeah, it's 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 pretty bad. I don't know what's causing it. I, I think it's just the cord is actually wearing out. I just need to get a new 
USB uh, B to A cable. Okay, the, the tank pushed me. You all saw that. The tank pushed me and threw my aim off. You all saw that. Hi, Sanghealy Enjoyer in chat. I don't know where my microphone cut off last time in the middle of my rant about how War Thunder should be less afraid to try new things and stop trying to be a World of Tanks competitor. But yeah, whatever my point was, my point st still stands. Another 89 cent donation. Hey, I thought about this before. Yes, these may be like, you know, 80 cent donations, but I mean, the dude's doing it like, you know, five times per stream. So like, it adds up, you know? I'm not gonna, do not bite the hands that feeds. Thank you for all donations, no matter how small. Hey, Edda, I know you have played RimWorld for seasons, for reasons A through D. What do you think about it? I've actually never played RimWorld. I hate to break it to you guys. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. But I have, indeed, never played RimWorld. That's a Paradox game, isn't it? I love Paradox. I think they're a great company, and I think they make really good games. Um, but I have not... RimWorld is not one that I've... Whoa! I knew that was going to happen. Oh, God. He's got... Yeah, he's got big tiger bullets. That's not going to work. We got we to gotta redo this. We got to reapproach this. Thankfully, though, we have a, a resupply point at the ready, and he does not. All right, Chad. I'm actually going to lock in real quick. Edda, you see the chat book delayed? I was trying to get your attention. Well, but your well, your your chat is like definitely delayed a lot more than for whatever reason your internet or your messages are staying a lot later because other people were spamming. Actually, the first person who said Mike, I saw it and then corrected it, and then after I fixed my mic, I saw all the other messages coming in, and I was like, okay, okay. And then well after that, saxophone enjoyer, I saw your message come in from Mike. I literally thought you were trolling because I was like, I've already fixed the issue, and everyone has stopped spamming Mike, so clearly like it's all good. But, uh, no, you are a goofy little guy. Okay, that's... That hurts. That hurts a lot. We're being engaged by two different tanks right now. Oh, no, that's just a guy. Whoa! I was about to say, can you imagine if that hits? And it did. I'm so good. Can you imagine? Alright, that didn't hit. Chat, sometimes we miss those. Bro, famous Paradox game RimWorld? I know what RimWorld is. I've seen gameplay of it. I just have not. No, it's not Paradox. It's in All right, it's it's the cable's not even coming loose. I don't think tape is gonna solve this. I think I actually just have a bad mic cable. I'm you must turn the tide of this battle before it's too late. Bitch ass, what the, what the hell, what the heck, what the heck, doodles? All right, welcome to the stream where we play Battlefield Five in our peripheral vision and stare at the microphone, uh, level microphone level, meter the entire time. Okay, now, nah, but I actually have to aim the tank a little bit, so this is. Chat, what would you do if we just had a silent stream? What if, you know? What if? What if we bite? What if we just? What if we just give in? Eat Mike? No, I'm not gonna eat the mic, guys. That's immature. Where's this damn tiger? Ch Fuck me. That's a Panzer IV that I was not expecting to see here. We're gonna die. A ba the German battle tractor! He blocked me! What the fuck? 
I was staring at the microphone levels. I didn't even see the Panzer IV. Silent stream when? No, unironically, though, we might have to do a silent stream. I mean, not now, but, like, that would be funny, though, don't you guys think? A silent stream? A stream where we just literally, like, we just don't? Do a, a speed and a rage? I don't know what that means. That is Mike wants his attention and gentle touch. No, it doesn't. It wants my fucking fist. My mic wants to get... My mic wants it rough and dirty, dude. I'll give it to him live on stream. Alright, three shots with a Garand. Are you cringing right now? Oh, I missed. Alright. Guys, the microphone... Hey, guys, just heads up. Microphone update. Heads up. The microphone is still good. The microphone's okay. Bro, it has spouts where it works for like 30 minutes. And then it just doesn't anymore. Also, the game is running horribly. What if we just canceled out this? What if we canceled out that too? What if I closed out of this? What if I closed out of that? Just to make... This is what you bastards get. This is what you fuckers. This is what happens. This is what happens, okay? This is what- you get the shit out of my face. This is what you get for the rest of stream. <laughs> this is what you get, okay? <laughs> this is what has to happen. I'm sorry, but there's no other way- <laughs> I just got teabagged on Battlefield 5 live stream. Ugh. What do I do? Chat, what do I do in this situation? What you do in this situation, okay? I want your honest feedback. Because clearly this isn't working. Chat, maybe this whole YouTuber thing just is not working out, you know? Maybe it's just, maybe this is just not it. Maybe this just isn't it. I'll, I'll fix the microphone. 20 check to run from Tuzeneko Coast. Mental breakdown up. coming any oh, second. I see that I see that TTS jump scare. That is quite loud. I saw that now on the voice levels. Sorry guys. Hey, I'll I'll fix that up right now. Don't you worry. Don't you worry your pretty little heads. I'm gonna open this up again too, because I don't think the I don't think the alert. Like you guys didn't see the alert. Man, what the fuck? This shit's so fucked. Man, this stream is so fucked. <laughs> Is this ASMR stream? It is. This is the ASMR stream. You want to guess who it was that teabagged you? Beck? Beck, if I guess correctly, will you give me a million dollars? And can you promise that live on stream? And can, can you, can that be a, a uh, contractually obliged? Like, held to contract? Move your headset mic. Bro, it's not my headset. <gasps> Wait, that's a good idea! Hold on, wait, chat. Somebody just made a really good point. That's not my headset mic, it's the microphone of my camera. But, you're making a really good point right now. Um, hold on, how do I do this? Uh, alright, I'm literally forgetting how to do this. Add. Uh, audio source? Uh, audio input capture. Add existing. Headset mic. Oh, chat, what's up? How's this, huh? How do we feel about this? There's... Okay, well... <laughs> yeah, so this is happening right now, isn't it? Excuse me, friends. Excuse me. I didn't even notice that. These guys just thought I was, like, having having a good time. I actually am having a good time. Yep, now they start coming in. Now they start floating in. Chat, what a unique experience this has been. That's much better. Honestly, not horrible. Yeah, this is the mic that I used for VR, so... Alright, well, that was it. <laughs> the entire the entire team was sitting there on the point, and they were ready for me. The entire team was on was on E, and they were just like, what the fuck is this Sherman doing? This guy, like, bro's AFK. And then the moment I moved, they were just like... Pew. Pew. Chat, this might be one of the worst experiences I've ever had in my entire life. I'm gonna keep stealing the Sherman spawn, too. I like the echo on the cam mic. Well, thank you. I put that echo in myself, actually. I coded that echo in all on my own. It's good. Peaks a bit. Well, yeah, that's because it's a... 
like shitty headset mic. What if I turned it down a little bit? Turn it down. It also it doesn't have like a pop filter or nothing, so it's just raw. Like this is raw. I hope that somebody tunes into this as their first Edit 320 live stream, and they just assume that like this is it. You know, this is as good as it gets. Although to be honest, I think even for regular viewers, this is as good as it gets. Even for those of you who have been here since day one, you guys are like, yeah, yeah, no, this is a this this is about right. Where? There? No, he's literally standing on top of. God damn it. It's just an anti-tank rifle. How much damage could it possibly do, guys? There he is. Hiya! I missed. <laughs> I actually tried to hit him with the main gun instead of trying to do just machine guns. I know he's in there, dude. The splash damage on, like, HE rounds in this game... Oh! Oh, I ran somebody over! <laughs> Oh, well, that's great. That works. Yeah, dude, the fucking splash damage on HE rounds in this game is so pathetic and awful, and I hate it. Like, I should be able to put an HE round into, like, the window of a building, and it kills fucking everyone. Gives me Xbox Live Party vibes? Yeah, I mean, that's basically what we're going for here at this point. This is basically... This is about as held together as an Xbox Live Party. Oh, he's still... Oh, God, bro is still dancing. Uh-oh. There we go. There's guys over here, too. At least I think there are. I'm not gonna lie, bros. I don't think we're gonna be able to financially recover... I don't think we will ever financially recover from this. I'm once again asking for your financial support. Say goodbye to your turret ring. I shot you in the front plate. That should have gone through. But you know what? Whatever. It's Battlefield. Not my place to judge. And you're dead. Huzzah! Uh oh, I hear footsteps. Kill him! Oh no! He clacked it at the last second! Oh, I'm sorry, chat. That probably killed you. That was probably way too loud. Chat, what if we just... <coughs> Have you used the Stroom Tiger yet? No, I haven't. I also saw uh, Dance fans in chat. The animations where you get in and out of the tank are pretty cool. I feel like you don't see that detail often. Yeah, they added that in Battlefield 1. In other Battlefield games prior, there were no animations for that kind of thing. And then in Battlefield 1, they did that. And then they've stayed... Um, They've stayed loyal to it in Battlefield 5, which I quite like. Alright, hold on, chat. I just don't I just don't know what to do. Like I don't I don't know like who I am anymore. Do I have a spare USB like USB B to A um Edit 320's going under? Yeah, this is it. This is when the channel like this is when the channel dies. After this stream, it's I'm it's uh, it's over, guys. I'm done. Um but yeah, what are our our uh, challenges. Okay, so capture five objectives and kill people. And then complete five squad orders. Okay. So, I should be a squad leader and I should assign squad orders. And then I need... Oh, and, and to capture objective. You can do both of these at the same time. I can do a squad order to capture an objective. And then I can... Um, and then I can fulfill it. And that works. Do I have a spare chat? Look inside, my, look inside of my box of many IT things. Do I have a spare USB B to A cable? Surely I do. I fucking work in IT for God's sakes. That's like USB mini. That's weird. Why do I have that? Chat, that doesn't make any sense. Chat, does anyone have any spare USB type B? It, it's gonna look like... Well, actually, I can't really do that. It's not gonna work. I was gonna unplug my mic and show it to you, but I don't think the cable would reach far enough. Am I squad leader? I am squad leader. Hold on, we gotta get, we gotta get in the tank. What map is this? Alright, I found out now. Oh, dude, fuck this map. This map is so fucking... The planes... Dude, the plane rule on this map is so fucked. If you're in a plane on this map, you own everything. And especially as the Germans... I'm, I never play as the Americans on this map. I always play as the Germans. And especially as the Germans, if you drive down that road, if you drive that way, you will get bombed by 60 bajillion planes. So, and look, this other tank knows it too. Look, both of us are dropping down to the right because we know. If you go on that main road, you're fucked. Oh, he's got the cool camo. <gasps> look! He's got, like, historically accurate camo. That's cool. Although this is, you know, like, 1944 Europe camo. Not really suited for North Africa, are you, buddy? 
I'm uh, I'm LARPing as a, a Panzer 2G, or a Panzer 4G. <laughs> Panzer 2, who do I think I am? I'm LARPing as a Panzer 4G um, right now, like an early North Africa Panzer 4G. Except I have the uh, the extra intake right there of the Panzer 4H. So that's not quite accurate. But for the most part, this is pretty much a G. Rut row. We, we fell. We toppled. We took a, we took a little tumble. We're taking... We, we, we're up, just a little bit of a tumble. We're just taking... It's okay. We're just doing a little bit. There we go. Just uh, the Panzer IV's classic barrel roll maneuver as it goes. I'll mail it to you from Africa. Thank you, Weed Nose. I really appreciate that. Yeah, if any of you guys in chat have any spare USB Type B to Type A cables, you guys can do that. You guys can mail me that. My address is um, uh, fifty three sixty three Wantabo uh, Negra Arroyo Lane, Albuquerque, New Mexico. So just ship it to that address, and you'll get it right to me. Hello. All right, we have a lot more stream snipers than I thought. <laughs> I'm like, it's just now clicking where I'm like, man, there's a lot of people interested in my tank all of a sudden this match, and I'm just now clicking. Oh, right, I'm live, and people can join the game. I kind of forgot, but that's okay. All right, chat, so we should go capture objectives and fulfill squad orders. So let's go capture this D. Okay, I'm actually not squad leader. All right, well then, uh, I'm going to create a new squad with me at the helm. All right, if anyone wants to join my squad, go for it. So I gotta fulfill these squad orders so I can get my damn get my damn money. Look at us and our little our little Panzer IV crew. Look at us! Aren't we so cute, chat? Me and my little children. I thought your address was one. Um not quite. Whoa, 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 thank you for pointing that out to me. That was somehow a glancing blow, bro. That hit him directly. Oh, we might we might pull off this cliff, chat. We might fall off this cliff. Stay on, boys. Stay on. Where is he? Oh, I see him. Yeah. He's gonna confront me. He's not running away. What the hell? Okay. Sure thing, buddy. Oh, is that Beck? Beck. Oh, rest in peace, Beck. Beck, you silly man. I mean, woman. You silly goober. I'm sorry, Beck. I'd like to formally apologize for that. Okay, I somehow killed that guy. Which is a short MG burst. We lost objective A already? God damn, dude. Who? Incompetence. Everywhere. And we're getting bombed. Yeah, chat, this is not... Wait, are any of you guys engineers? Can any of you guys, like, help heal the tank? Don't tell me that I'm being like caked in teammates right now and none of them are uh support engineers how the fuck are you gonna be like supporting my tank if you're not an engineer we're gonna die he missed ha he missed ha ha that guy sucks fuck this is just like the ending of the beast just barely get elevation all right change of plans we're going back to capture a because that's away from everything and we're not gonna get bombed hopefully Goodbye, teammates. Bye, friends. Join my squad and spawn on me if you're interested in being with me again. Hi. Hello, are you doing an open lobby? I mean, yes. If you can find this lobby and join it, then you are you are allowed to, yes. I am not restricting you. I'm not forbidding you from joining my game. Damn, that guy's got a good, that guy's got a good shot. I was about to say, that guy's got a good arm, as if he's, like, throwing those at me. All right, you're going to lose this fight, despite the fact that I'm low on health. Maybe you won't lose this fight. Damn you. Bro, they literally own every... Our team sucks. I mean, I'm not very good either, but man. Oh my god, what a glancing blow that was. guy distracted me that was it that was uh that was what did me in what's the lobby called i didn't create it it's just it's just a i don't know it's it's a it's an official dice server uh it it's in germany the server is located in germany 
All right, Chad. I don't think we're gonna do very well here, fulfilling our um, fulfilling our orders. You can see the server name and code when you pause. Uh, I don't think so. I can't. You can rewind the stream and you can find it. You silly man. Or woman. Well, chat. Now it's just left alone with our thoughts. Have you by chance played tanks in Battle Bit by chance? Yes, I have. That's actually a really good point. But yeah, man, I really missed out on that hype train, didn't I? Battle Bit was huge. I should have done a Tank Enthusiast Racks to Battle Bit when I had the chance. But alas, I did not. And it was the end of me. Hold on, straighten your posture, Edda. Like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Okay, chat. This Greyhound may or may not be omniscient. He's gonna kill me. Run! Run! Oh, wait, is it Beck again? Beck, is that you? It's Beck. Well, at least we have a friendly Greyhound. Oh, boy. Beck, I'm gonna capture your point. Don't run me over. Don't run me over, Beck. Oh, it's Wisteria! Oh, it's Wisteria! Hey, Wisteria! Please don't run me over. I'm gonna capture your point. Please don't run me over. Oh! Jeez, buddy. Man, you are really making this hard, huh? Gee, golly gee willikers. Goodness gracious. All right. I had one, la I had one last thing to try, and it was the bayonet charge. That's all I had. Okay. Tiger time. This time, we simply can't die. This time, it is physically impossible for us to lose. As we are in a tiger. Oh, and there's a friendly tiger as well. Look at it. Dude, two tigers assaulting one point? What a massive misallocation of resources. But, by God, is it going to work? Okay, I forget how much curve there is on the rounds here. Stop rolling. Stop rolling, tiger. Ooh, good shot by me. Thank you, me. Wisteria, I'm gonna kill you. When is Stug 4 time? Never, because Stug 4 doesn't exist. I don't acknowledge it. I don't acknowledge it as a real game. Or, or sorry, as a real uh, tank. I just read Wisteria's chat message. My game just crashed, and I thought it was a game. But I did not mean game, obviously. Ooh, that actually almost hit. That's not gonna work. Our team is probably pissed off right now. Like, why are both of our tanks going to A? Like, we, we're we losing every point. Like, we need to assault the major... Oh, we lo wow. We lost a tank, too. Damn. Is it really that difficult? Or does that guy just suck? It's okay. When one, and when one tiger dies, six more appear, as we all know. That's what the tiger was famous for in World War II. Uh, it was a famous American commander who exclaimed, Every time we destroy one tiger tank... Four more up here. Okay, that's... That's annoying that that guy would do that. That's really rude of him. Alright, well, the point is completely infested with people, so that's something that I didn't take into consideration. I got bombed. <laughs> Chat, this is not working. I mean, Stug is a Stug, right? But for real, why didn't they use the Stug 3? They didn't use the Stug 3 because they were crunched for time. And they could only make the Stug 4. Because they had already made the, the model for the Panzer 4 in the game. So when they had to make a Stug, they were like, oh, we'll just we'll just use the same chassis model. And we'll make, like, the Stug for the game will be the Stug 4. And I mean, the Stug was a real vehicle. Like, my all memes aside, I mean, yeah, the Stug did work. And like, actually, like, that kind of makes sense. Because, like, I mean, the Germans did that in real life, too. Where they're like, hey, like we already have the Stug, or sorry, we already have the Panzer IV chassis, so let's make a Stug out of that too. And then they made uh, the Jagdpanzer IV, which was technically a different thing, but they kind of ended up doing the similar things. I mean, not really. Eh, yeah, not really. The gun that the Stug had was a bit better. It was like a Sherman 75 76 argument, where like the Stungerschutz gun was probably better for anti infantry, whereas, especially once you do the Jagdpanzer IV 70, that's, that's more of an anti tank gun. Why did they put the short barrel on it, though? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. That is true. The the And I point that out in the Battlefield 5, my Tank Enthusiast Racks to Battlefield 5 video. Um, 
yeah, so the... Uh, are we, now we have to play as Medic, by the way, so we can heal ourselves worth 500 health. Um, yeah, that's something I pointed out in the Tank Disease React, where the base model of the Panzer IV, or the, the Stuk IV, the base model has, yeah, that short 75, the uh, KWK 37, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but that did not, like, normal Stugs would have had this. Stug 3 would have started with the KWK 37. But yeah, Stug 4 was introduced late enough that it would have been the KWK 40 uh, from the get-go. So yeah, I don't know why. I think I think because Battlefield 5, like, they wanted a Stug 3, but they had already made the Panzer 4, so they were like, Stug 4. Mainly because the Stoke Factory from Krupp got bombed. Yeah, and that's why the Stoke Factory getting bombed was, like, massive. Because that also led to the creation of the Hetzer, obviously, and, like, all these other, like, wacky um, variants to replace. Because, like, the Sturmgeschutz had been providing such a valuable role for the German army. I mean, it is the most, it was the most mass, or, er, it was the most numerically produced single tank in Germany during World War II. Like, yeah, if you combine the numbers of the Panzer III, the Panzer IV, and the Panther, you can beat it. And actually, if you, com if you combine the numbers of the Panzer IV and the Panther, you can beat it um, quite easily. But, like, a single of any single vehicle uh, Germany manufactured, any single tank, Germany manufactured the most Sturmgeschutz threes. And, oh, great. Well, sorry for everyone who was uh, trying to join the lobby. <laughs> All right, well, now you get another chance. Let's scroll, guys. Let's see. Um... Let's do a strategic conquest on Aerodome. Why not? So anyway, all that's to say that, yeah, the Sturmgeschutz was fulfilling a very critical role in the German army. Like, and they were, they were very useful and the Germans loved them and they built a shit ton of them. So all of a sudden when, you know, that would be like if Sherman production got hit or if T-34 production got hit where it's like, yeah. So when Stug, when Stug production gets hit and they, and they can't build them anymore to the numbers, that they need uh obviously it makes sense then that they would go scrambling for any other potential uh alternative of making strokes man we are really having bad luck with just getting put on unbalanced teams that are getting their asses handed to them that's okay though look there's only one tank on the field right now and there's two slots so actually no we have to play as a medic for the challenges sorry I'm not doing this whole grinding thing very well. We have to grind, which means we have to do the challenge stuff. So we got to play as medic. We have to heal ourselves worth 500 points. And we have to capture, we have to do uh, objectives. Hey, Beck's on our squad. Hey, Beck. Um, can I? Oh, I'm not the squad leader. All right, hold on. Beck, I'm going to make my own squad because I need to be a squad leader so I can assign my own squad tasks and then fulfill them. So I can get these, I can get these grinds. Whoa. There's a guy over there. And there's a guy in that bush. I was going to take cover behind those rocks just then, but that guy had a Turner SMLE. Oh, I, I do love the Turner SMLE in this game. You didn't choose the Stug Life, the Stug Life chooses you. It often does, indeed. It's so often, it truly does. The Stug Life does choose you. When will be Tank Enthusiast reacts to War Thunder? So it's a good question. I'm not sure. Um, I kind of make... I make videos on a whim. Like, I very much... Uh, as much as it may seem like I know what I'm doing, I kind of don't. And so I just sort of make videos when the inspiration strikes me. So next up, I'm currently preparing for... Or, well, actually, I have the footage. Most of the footage recorded. For um, a Tank Enthusiast reacts to Gates of Hell off front. That game. Um could do a battle bit video still i could still do a battle bit video but it would yeah it would be a little bit like geez man really took you this long <laughs> but admittedly yes i could do i could still do a battle bit video um i mean yeah there's a there's a bunch of games that are that like yeah you know we would um that would be good to do i think these reacts for <laughs> what a great game i just joined yeah demon taj we're all thinking the same thing as if or demon yaj as if that's a guy in chat, I don't think he is. But, yeah. We joined a game that is not doing well. Okay, that was just bad aim on my part. I'll admit that. I'll admit to my sins. And I'm dead. You might die. Beck? I oh, know. There's that one guy just sitting in that bush watching. You can't 
You're not going to be able to revive me, Beck. I'm sorry. All right, Wisteria, be a good Tiger player, please. Because I'm clearly not. Sometimes I wonder if, like, YouTuber syndrome is a real thing, you know? Or, well, not, like, YouTuber syndrome, but, like, streamer... The streamer effect? That, like, streamers and YouTubers are terrible at video games? When I play alone, and I've got, like, a podcast running in the background, or, like, a Vsauce video or something in the background, I, like, actually... Like, there are definitely moments that I have where I'm like, damn, I wish I was recording that. But then moments like that, like, just then right there, like, that was awful, like, what I just did. Like, that was terrible. <gasps> Wisteria, do you want to be Panzer Buddies? I know I just said, I know, play as a medic so we can do the grind, but Wisteria, I think maybe it would be best if we had more than one tank and we could watch each other's backs. Let's watch each other's backs, okay, buddy? We're gonna push this together. We have to we have to capture E, so protect me, okay? We're gonna capture E. Let's go. Like, is the game a little bit too quiet for you guys? This is not the hangar where you cap E. Okay, alright. I've tried before to get through all that rubble. I know you can't, so we're gonna go the long way. Thank you, friends. You also can't climb over? Oh, there we go. We can climb over this. Alright, I already know there's going to be... Yep. Somehow I missed that. Okay. Yeah, I already know there's going to be people all through this corridor. Ow, ow, ow. I don't know what just hit me. Fuck, oh, my turret. My turret's down. Oh, it was... That was the... That was uh, the... The tulip. The tulip thing just got me. Wisteria, there's a tulip uh, greyhound up there. I think that's what got me. Thank you for the repairs. Have we lost F? We did lose F. Man, they... Ow, damn. Where? Alright, come on, Wisteria. We just gotta go. Let's go. I'm stuck on something. There's a guy behind us. Kill him. Come on, just complete at least one squad order. That's all I ask. Wisteria! No, we lost the tiger! Tank down! Tank destroyed! Push up to D! Come on, we gotta keep moving. Where's that damn Greyhound? He's up there, I know it. Yep, yeah, that's a vehicle. Come on, come in, come in my line of sight. Come in my line of sight. Come on. Come on. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Good shit. I also see this happening in front of me. Thank you. I've already used up my repair here. And we're over. Damn. We had something, man. We if we had if we had pulled that off, like right when we joined, we actually maybe could have had something there. I'm gonna uh I'm gonna turn up the game a little bit. That, that particular match felt specifically empty in the audio department, I feel like. Yeah, the, the game's really quiet. Sorry, guys. Hold on. Hey, I leveled up, though. I got 3,000 company coins. All right, continue. Let me hit pause so I can... All right, this might be a while. What would be your opinion if armor degradation degradation was in like a sim arcade tank game like good bad and good or bad and why i don't think armored what do you mean by armor degradation like as you get hit your armor becomes less effective like oh you have a hundred millimeters of effective armor and then you get hit with a you know 105 millimeter he shell and then there was no penetration nobody died your your tank didn't your tank did not like take any damage but now your 100 millimeters of frontal armor has now been degraded down to like 90 or something like that is that what you're saying or do you mean like age like with age that's the tank degrades or whatever you know 
Hold on, guys. I'm gonna turn the game up because yeah, that was my fault. I was playing. I was playing my own music in the background, and now I'm not. So we're gonna run with that. Or are you referencing like what happens in Foxhole? Foxhole has like there's like health, and then there's armor. And when your tank gets shot at, man, I instinctively spawn in a tank when I should be in a medic. I should be a medic. All right, when we die as this tank, we're going to be a medic. Um, yeah, or do you mean like what Foxhole has? Where like you have an armor value and then you have a health value. And as you get hit, Jesus, that was a really low flyby. Thank you for that. Um, I'm assuming that's Wisteria. Um, and then, yeah, like when you get hit, your armor value can go down and... On the battlefield right then and there, you can repair your health, but you have to return back to the factory to get your armor back up. Yes, on hits, like if two hits overlap. Okay, now you lost me at the, the two hits overlapping thing. But I, I think I understand conceptually what you're saying. Where you have like armor and health, like as two different things to keep track of. Whoa, 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 whoa. That needs to die right there, whatever that is. I mean, I know what it is, but it's okay. That was a delayed, that delayed effect was great. Oh, we hit his tracks, good. And pop goes the weasel. Danger, over there. Oh, I was about to say, come on, dude, I hit that guy like five times with the MG. I'm actually gonna turn it down just by like, I think 35 makes sense. Woo, go. Watch there. There we go. Man, I'm actually surprised. Usually, uh, on this map specifically, like, America getting the beachhead, like, usually just does not work. Usually this map is super difficult on the Americans. Especially, like, in tanks. I, just, I always find as the Americans, I spawn in a tank, and it just does not work for me. Dude, I was, how invincible is that guy? Thank you, uh, Bet. You are correct. Request an order. Let's go take D. Mysteria, thank you for supporting me. He's in front. Got one. There's another one behind the hill. There, there's like three of them behind this hill, Wisteria. Can I repair behind you? Can you push in front of me? I gotta repair. Thank you. Beck, I'm sorry, you're gonna die. You are gonna you're gonna slowly bleed out on the road. It's like in Saving Private Ryan when the guy gets sniped and they just have to leave him on the road. Because if they go get him, they're gonna get fucked. Their position's gonna get overrun. Or you know, they're gonna reveal themselves and get sniped. Rest in peace, Beck and chat. Yeah, I see that guy too, Wisteria. I killed him. Wisteria would make this perfect. Tank behind us, to your right. Fuck me. Oh god. Ugh. I need to repair. I need to repair real bad. Wisteria, I gotta go back to the beach, man. This is too much. That plane hit me and it was too much. Yeah. Oh, actually, oh, back. Thank you. Thank you, back. Love you so much. Okay, hold on, this guy can shoot us. Oh, god damn, what the hell? Alright, let's just go. Alright, we got the first shot. We're basically guaranteed to win. Nice. Beck, were you trying to say... <laughs> Thank god my chat is censored. If my chat wasn't censored, Beck probably would have just gotten me banned from YouTube right there. All right, you know what? Let's defend F. That's an order that we can actually fulfill. Wisteria, we gotta get on the point so we can defend F and fulfill this damn order and progress in this damn challenge. All right, that was some bad aim on my part. Oh, double kill. That was nice. That was, that was satisfying. All right, are we on the point? All right, we're on the point. We are currently... Completing this order, so we are just gonna hold our ground. We have taken objective able. 
Ow. I knew it. I knew there was going to be somebody in that damn tower. Got him. It seemed like too much of an obvious place for someone to just be chilling. All right, we got... Oh, hey, we've already completed three out of five squad orders. I didn't even know that. All right, this is our order again. Just keep defending this point. Ow. Okay, we might, we might not be able to keep doing this anymore. I'm sorry, teammates. You guys are just going to have to die. Uh-oh. Block me. We're going to die. This is it. It's over. It's Jover. It's so Jover, chat. It's so Jover. No! Damn. We tried. Them getting the beachhead doesn't work because it didn't work. I guess that's a fair point. Objective Fox has been lost. Am I the only one who doesn't really like Iwo Jima on Conquest? I don't like any of the Pacific Theater maps, to be honest. They're just not, like, I don't know. Maybe as a tank player. <laughs> they just really are hostile to me. Whoa, Jesus! Oh, jeez. God, that was close. Oh, where are we being shot from? Oh, that's a tank. <sighs> well, that's the way the cookie crumbles. I know it's not explaining, but if you get hit with a shell that can't, quite go, that can't quite go through, if you get hit again on the same spot, it can go through. I like that idea a lot. The way you describe it there's there, I like that idea. Like, I, I, that has the Edit 320 seal of approval. If you're, like, trying to pitch this as, like, what do I think of that as, like, a game mechanic or something? I like that a lot. I think that makes sense. Here! I know you can use this. We must take control of that objective. I think, I, I believe in being able to, like, pummel a tank to death with HE. Like, as much as people get upset over, you know, like, uh, what's the phrase? Overpressure or, um, all that in games like War Thunder. Um, I mean, it, like, it... It does work. Like, large caliber HE does have a massive effect on tanks. Um, artillery. I mean, artillery always has been, still and always has been, the number one enemy of the tank. I mean, ar artillery was and still is, um, like, one of the most important arms of any army. Like, artillery is, you know, insanely important. It's good against tanks. It's good against people. It's just good. Our artillery is just goaded. And so, yeah, large caliber HE should definitely have an effect on tanks. And then, yeah, I agree that um, if you hit the same place twice, like the exact same place twice, uh, then, yeah, it should it should degrade the armor. Yeah. Oh shit. Hold on. Yeah, as a tank player, I repair this station. If you play Battlefield 5, please repair these. Every time you walk past one of these repair stations, please repair it. Because for tank players, those things are like a goddamn bonfire in Dark Souls. Like, those are the safe havens, bro. Like, you have no idea how much you help out your team by repairing those little stations. So, every time you walk past one of those repair stations, just please build it back up. I can't tell you how many times my tank has been on fire, smoking profusely. I retreat back to a point, and um, I retreat back to a point, and I'm trying to repair, but the repair station is destroyed. Like, the point's fine, there's no infantry on it, but just the, re the repair point's destroyed. And I have teammates standing next to it, and I'm literally, I switched my coax MG, and I am shooting it, like, trying to signal to my team, and spamming the Q, like, need repair thing. Like, trying to just send a signal to anyone that I need that I need them to repair my tank and they just don't do it just a moment it frustrates me to no end Up you go, soldier Beck stop trying to fucking get in the way man oh god help there we go 
Beck died. Rest in peace. Come on, boys. We gotta push this bunker. Let's go. Let's go. Push F. We have to complete our objective. Oh, hey. I got something. Oh, I got the medic quest. Nice. I didn't heal myself, but great. Come on, team. You want to live forever? Shit. Oh, he mowed down my entire team. <laughs> that machine gunner mowed down my entire team. Hold on, boys. I got you. Come on now. Appreciate it. Wait, why did I say appreciate it? <laughs> I'm the one who did the healing. Well, in fact, a lot of Panthers were knocked out in Nor knocked out in Normandy. We're knocked out with 75 mm Sean's just getting repeatedly hit with the 75 mm HE shell. Yeah, I did know that because Panther armor, well, uh, German armor in general, was uh, severely not good anymore. Uh, by the end of World War II, I just got katana Watch out, there's a rogue, a rogue katana. Oh my god! The katana's that good? Bro, I've used it once and been, like, mildly successful with it. And was like, okay, that's a neat weapon. But holy shit, that person just cut down our entire squad. <laughs> hey, Captain Q-Tip in chat, what's up? Cop, cop, World War One. Yes, artillery, yes. Artillery is obviously uh, another... World War One is another great example of how great artillery is. Oh, God. The two worst things are happening in chat right now. Somebody is complaining about someone else and a weapon that they've used, and the other person is responding, trying to uphold the conversation, but doesn't realize that the first person is in team chat, and they're in all chat, so they're, like, now it just looks weird. Yes, back in Wisteria, I'm talking to you guys. And now I'm dead. All right, let's go back up here because clearly there's like an actual fight going on up here. We must seize the objective here. We must work a and this is like an actual objective that we can complete. I'm a little slow. Well, yeah, Wisteria, you are. But that's why we love you, okay? Don't ever, don't ever be fast. Because if you were fast, then I would hate you. Oh, there's a tank. Oh, that's why. I see now. It all makes sense. There is literally a tank just in the caves. That actually, you know, a lot just clicked for me there. Tank in B, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we noticed that. Okay, well then let's switch to anti-tank and give this a second shot. I was wondering, I was like, man, there's so many blue dots on top of B, but we're not capping it. Like, how is that possible? And uh, yeah, that makes sense. So let's go try to do something about that. Oh, this is, this is sneaky. I don't know what this is here. Oh, I like this. I like the implications of this. Right, what actually what other challenges do we have to do let's just let's catch up shall we uh still complete five squad orders and capture five objectives oh that's right we have we need to capture objectives so it's, it's not gonna be enough to just get squad orders over and over again defending a point we have to capture objectives that's part of our squad goals so fuck yeah we're gonna have to figure that out the bad guys over there no teammates let's see if this works there's bad people down there, Wisteria. Please be careful. I don't like this at all. I don't like this one bit. Oh, we're capping. <gasps> yes! Cap. Oh, finally. Woo! We did it, boys. Oh, there's a guy behind me, please. Oh, God. Our entire team. Our entire team was just sick of them. Oh, what? They're still alive. Team, you guys suck. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Beck. Oh, now revive this guy. Get him up. Oh, no. We failed. Oh. Don't teabag him, you silly goobers. So disrespectful, especially for a teammate. Come on now. If we were playing Halo, I would I would condone that behavior. But we forget the battlefield etiquette sometimes, you know? Am I right or am I right, chat? Alright, to see. Capture the next objective. Go, 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 go! Wisteria, just go! I think this will be the completion of the challenge, I think. We only need to complete. Alright, well. Cast just how wait, how did that even happen? 
they didn't do like a gun run on us or anything, did they? Because like they, there was not like a a path of bullets. Did they hit us with a bomb or with like a rocket? Also, we just lost a fuck. <laughs> there was an entire the entire enemy team I think just went behind us when we capped B. That makes sense as to how we were getting shot at from behind when we capped B. Hit us with rockets? Damn. This is why I hate planes. Alright, I hate... You know, yeah, considering, like, my experience with casts in various games that I enjoy, and, you know, them ruining my experience of being a tanker in those games, it's a surprise that I don't hate planes as much as I hate boats. Because they have, like, genuinely really wronged me in a significant way, and in a way that I shan't soon forget. But then, yeah, no, like, uh, planes I'm, like, pretty okay with. It's like, oh, cool, planes. They're, they're not bad. Maybe duck next but time. I do hate casts. I don't mind planes, but I hate casts. If you want to tell someone that you like them, just say they're, like, friendly artillery for infantry. So true, bestie. Tell If you want to tell someone that you like that you like them, tell them that they are just, like, artillery. Infinitely useful, incredibly powerful, and um, explosive. They did take B, you're right. Thank you, Wisteria, for the heads up. We can go back, because we still need to capture another objective. We need to capture one more objective for the challenge. We do have the proper amount of uh, orders followed. Chat, my aim is bad. Yeah, that was actually really bad aim on my part. Hit that guy. That was also really bad aim on my part. Chat, play a drinking game at home. Take a shot every single time I miss. <laughs> just, I literally might as well just tell you all to kill yourselves. <laughs> like at that point, just like, that. Nah, just fucking put a gun to your head because there's no way. Behind us? Whoa. Whoa. Oh my God, that works on not tanks? That actually just works. <laughs> I had no idea that that like, that that worked. How devastating was the Sherman with the flame door? Uh, they were loved in the Pacific. Um, this makes a lot of sense, but specifically, and there were a couple of these that were built, but 105 millimeter Shermans that were equipped with um, bow-mounted flamethrowers were loved in the Pacific, and like every single operation that they were a part of, the troops hailed them endlessly. Um, flame Shermans, I don't know how often Flame Shermans were, like, how common they were to see in Europe. Because on one hand, you had, like, the Flame, the, croc the, tro the Churchill Crocodiles and things like of that nature that did see combat in Europe. And, um, I mean, they were, like, decently popular, I guess. They were around. But yeah, I haven't seen too many, like, period photos of Sherman, like, American Flame Shermans. Um... I don't know why I went to revive that guy. Like, we were very clearly under assault. I just, I thought I was a medic and I thought it would take me like half a second, but I forgot that I'm not a medic anymore. Um, but yeah, so I don't know exactly how useful they would have been, or they were in uh, Europe, but yeah, I have seen a lot of period photos. Like, if you look up like Sherman with Flamethrower, um, a mass, a vast majority of the photos you'll find are of the Pacific Theater. And yeah, I just, I just know that they were loved. Also the Flame KVs, yeah. I don't know much about those. I don't know how much, like, the Soviets... I do know... I mean, the Soviets did love the idea of, like, putting flamethrowers in their shit. Because the Soviets did it uh, a lot. In the original, original specifications for the T-34, they asked for a flamethrower. And then when the order was put in for the first pilot tanks, or the first prototypes, um, the order was put in for one convertible tank... Or no, one tracked tanks, I think? And... No, one convertible tank and two tracked tanks. You know, one with the convertible, convertible suspension, one without. And then of the two tracked tanks, um, without a convertible suspension, uh, one of them would have a flamethrower. So the, so the Soviets had the idea of putting a flamethrower in the T-34 literally since day one. Like, unironically, the very first set of requirements to design a, a new medium tank that would become the T-34, in the very first set of requirements, they pretty much... They wanted a flamethrower. And I don't know about the KV. I don't know the KV side of things, but 
Yeah, so the Soviets liked it. The Soviets, I think... I don't know if the Soviets were, like, particularly, like, pyromaniacs or anything, but clearly they, uh, they saw some value in flamethrower tanks. And, um... So, yeah, to them it was just a default. Like, yeah, when we adopt this new tank, uh, I want us to have a variant that can equip a flamethrower. So that's a very long-winded way of saying that, but yes. <laughs> they probably loved it in the Pacific because the Japanese couldn't do much against tanks in general. Yeah, well, also, but, I mean, flamethrowers would be really, really, um... Oh! <gasps> Wait, Wisteria, seriously? Options. Gameplay. Wisteria, this has been one of my, like, biggest complaints about the game for so long. Player created content. That's cool. And we'll, oh, I see. Yeah. Um, All objective are ours, soldiers. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Hit indicator minimap default icon. Where is it, Wisteria? In the options? Where did you say it was? You said it was in the options. I couldn't find it. I'm crying. I'm crying. I'm crying and sobbing and weeping. Well, yeah, sorry, as I was saying. Yeah, the in the Pacific, they probably would have loved flamethrower tanks because, um, I mean, they're just super useful for, like, uh, an ambush. Yeah, like, we suspect there are some Japanese hiding in those bushes over there. And, yeah, just torch it, you know, just burn everything to the ground. And then now they can't hide anymore. I mean, same shit in Vietnam, right? Oh, thank you for taking the kill, Wisteria. Appreciate you. Although, to be honest, knowing my skill level, I probably would not have been able to get it either. Although, I hit two no-scopes with the Arasaka. Aren't I kind of cool? I should really learn more about Japanese tanks. And focus... Not focus, but I, I should be more aware of the Pacific Theater, you know? Like, I should I should know more about Japanese tanks and tank combat in the Pacific Theater. Because it's, it's just an area, it's and it's, it's an entire front of World War II that is just really not paid much attention to. I mean, obviously, it's stuff like this, like, yeah, the Pacific Theater gets focus, but yeah, always definitely with, like, America versus Japan, but I want to see, like, you know, Japan and China. Like, I want to see them some of that shit. That that was crazy, you know. That stuff was wacky. Go go crazy. Go go dookie. Where did this guy go? Oh, is he dead? What happened, Beck? What did you see? All right, hold on. Wasteri just gave me the key to the. Wait, was there? I didn't see that. Okay, gameplay, second row, loading, share out. Uh, okay, options, gameplay, the second row. I, oh, loadout mirroring. It's called loadout mirroring, you silly goober. Okay, yes, I found it. Thank you very much. Loadout sharing. It's loadout, loadout uh, mirroring. I found it. Thank you so much. That is unironically, like, yeah, that upsets me. That has been, like, one of my biggest complaints with the loadout system in Battlefield 1. Or, sorry, Battlefield 5. Is that, yeah, I kept having to change with factions. I was like, man, can't there be, like, faction... Can't you just, like, save a, a, a loadout by faction? So, thank you, Wisteria. That's a massive W. Now, all I need is the ability to customize your tanks in the middle of a match. Like, when you die, you can go into customization, and then you can change your camo scheme, your... Uh, your dressings and even like your uh, research tree for tanks uh, in the middle of a match. That to me would make this game perfect. I can't tell you how many times like I've equipped a certain camo for a tank and I've been like, oh, that camo wouldn't look good on this map. And then, or like I have a specific configuration for my Sherman and then I'm like, ah, like I, I have two, con I have two configurations for my Sherman that I love. One of them is like a Pacific Theater focused. It's got a flamethrower on it. Um, it's got a flamethrower, it's got Willy Pete, and it's got, like, a blue and tan, 
uh, like cut camo scheme, and it looks very Pacific Theater, and I love that Sherman loadout. But there are so many maps where that loadout just is not useful, so I would love in the middle of a game to be able to change that, you know? I hate loading into a game being like, alright, well, I guess I can't play as a tank today because my Sherman loadout sucks for this map. So yeah, that, that grinds my gears a little bit, that you can't customize your tanks during a match. Alright, I guarantee you there's a bad guy up here. My game is lagging hard, by the way. Or, my performance is not doing great right now. I'm seeing that too, chat. That's not just you guys. Okay, there's not someone up here. Now I'm confused as to where this last guy is. Now there's two of them. This is getting out of hand! Now there are two of them! Where are these guys? How are we doing? Now we need to do damage in an aircraft and resupply yourself using a supply drop reinforcement one time. For sure thing. Beep. Right here. That's easy. Back. Oh no, this guy. This guy died. What happened? I'm just gonna wait for this. Huzzah! Easy. Okay, now I need to be in a plane. So, when we die. Ow. I'm going to spawn in a plane. And everything will be epic. It actually won't, but what the fuck was that guy doing? Whoa! Chad, did you see that? Oh, thank you! <laughs> Thanks, medic. <laughs> Look at this dude. What a silly, what a silly goober. Hysteria! I'm coming, buddy. Oh, I'm the driver. Oh, great. You hopped in the, uh, the passenger seat, Wisteria. Whoa! <laughs> Wisteria killed himself with his own fire! Beck, what are we what are we gonna do about him? What are we gonna do about this silly goober? Alright, squad, hop in. Hop in the, the gang the gang mobile. Let's go. Hold on, we're gonna go uh oh shit, we're losing God damn it! Bro, who is on the point? Alright, gang. We drove in one big circle. Oh fuck, they're down there! There you go, Wisteria. Give them a taste of their own medicine, huh? Those damn Americans think they can use flamethrowers against us. Alright, there's definitely a dude who's, like, camping around the point somewhere with, like, a respawn beacon. And we have to find out where he is. This will not stand. He's gotta be over here. Like, he's gotta be in a bush or something, you know? Like, just on the on the edge of the point. Is he still on it? He is. There's li li Literally, this guy is still on this point. Like under the stairs? He is! He was under the stairs. Come on, I'm on E. Please find me. I found him. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, I will smile back. Smile. What a cute little game of hide and seek that was. Alright, everyone, back into the back into the Edda mobile. Gotta go. Thanks for coming out, Tessa. Appreciate you. Uh, we're gonna go to the other side of the map, because A and B need our help. Ow, I crashed. Hold on, friends. Let's go back. Alright. Family road trip. Hey! Hey! Quit shooting! Hey! I will turn this car right back around. You behave to each other. You damn, damn kids. Hey, I said behave! Daddy's gonna turn this car right back around. We're gonna go right back, and we're gonna get no McDonald's. Hey, no McDonald's, no McDonald's. If you stop shoot, if you if you continue to shoot. All right, that's it. We're not getting McDonald's. Whoa! Enemy! Kids, get out of the car. Shoot back! Ah! Oh. Kids, your father is dead. What do you think about Czechos Czechoslovak tanks of the interwar period, chat and Edda? Um, funny you should mention that because the Panzer 38T. Or, I'm sorry, I apologize. That was that was unfair of me to say. The LTVZ 38 is one of my favorite tanks of all time. Period. Full stop. I just love the way it looks, and it was a pretty good tank. It wasn't bad, but okay, chat. All right, uh, kids, get out of the car. We are actually going to defend the point.
All right, that dude literally got carpet bombed right in front of me, and he just, like, survived that. Also, admittedly, I had shit aim there. But I did hit... Did you guys see that shot that I hit before I died just then? That was pretty badass, wouldn't you say? What is your uninformed opinion of the LAGG3 in Soviet service? Um... I think that... I think that's racist. Any tips to use medium machine guns? They feel weirdly slow for the fast pace of Battlefield 5. Medium machine guns suck ass, unfortunately. I have tried so many times. I've even had a couple of, like, uh, like weekly missions where it's like get kills with the MG34 or something like that. I have really, I have tried so hard to LARP as, like, a German MG34 machine gunner. I have tried so fucking hard. Medium machine guns suck so much ass in this game. It's unironically, like, frustrating. They are way too heavy and bulky, I agree. And they don't make, they don't do nearly enough damage to compensate for it. And their accuracy is atrocious. Yeah, medium, sadly, medium machine guns are just fucked up. Oh, wait, hold on. Am I thinking of medium machine guns or light machine guns? I think I'm thinking of medium machine guns. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I am. I am. I am. I'm thinking of, yeah, medium machine guns. The T means it was made in Czechoslovakia. No, that's right. That's why I corrected myself because I said originally, I was going to say the Panzer 38T is uh is one of my favorite tanks but no the panzer 38t is the goofy silly bad german way um it is the ltvz 38 that's the proper czechoslovak medium g's are on the bipod ones yes exactly which you can't deploy unless which you can't uh ads unless the bipod is deployed yes and also i hate the bipod system no you're right we're, we're, all right we're gonna use I'm gonna go, we're gonna go for a German loadout just for a minute. We're gonna go German LARP. But yes, here's why medium machine guns suck ass in Battlefield 5. First of all, yeah, you can't uh, ADS unless you go with the with the um, with the bipod, which is like fair. Like games like Hell Let Loose do a similar thing. Honestly, I'm okay with this. The problem is, even at like point blank range, the accuracy on a medium machine gun is just so bad. And it does so little damage. It does so little damage that you just spray people. You, like, half mag dump on somebody, and you, they get, like, they lose 10 health. And it is so frustrating. And then, okay, fine. We have to deploy the bipod. But to deploy the bipod, like, it's so weird what the game considers a viable surface to deploy the bipod on. Like, when you're standing or crouching, and it's like, oh, like, I want to deploy the bipod here. I mean, this works, right? But, like, half the time, you'll be kind of standing on, like, an awkward surface that you're trying to deploy the bipod on. And then once you start shooting, the recoil of the gun moving around, all of a sudden, the game is just like, oh, now this is no longer a viable surface for the bipod. And you, like, come in and out of the bipod while you're shooting. And it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. Would there be a chance that you would react to the tank from Fortnite? Um, yeah, that would be funny. I mean, I feel like I've kind of missed the mark on that, but sure, I suppose I could. This might be a dumb question, but did the IS-3 see service in World War II? No, it didn't, actually. That was, like, the big story of the IS-3 was that it debuted in the victory... Pr the first time anyone in the world, other than the Soviet military, saw the IS-3 was in the, like, World War II victory parade. Was like, yay, we did it, like, World War II's over. That was the first time anyone outside of Russia saw the IS-3. So no, the IS-3 did not see combat during World War II. It wasn't in service in World War II. Oh, okay, well there was a plane that just cucked the fuck out of me. And then there's also another thing of like, even when you do have a bipod deployed, like the recoil is still kind of atrocious and hard to control. And again, it just does so little damage. So even if you have good recoil control and you get, you know, five, six, seven shots in succession on a target, it, it just doesn't kill people. It just feels so neutered. Look, now, so like, all right, well, I got to get up here for to deploy my bipod. It's just so weird. Yeah, I hate medium machine guns in this game or were done so dirty, in my opinion. Especially guns as cool as the MG34. The MG34 is quickly become- Yeah, look, you see what's happening here with the bipod? Did you see that? I was like moving in and out of being mounted. Whoa. Yeah, man, the MG34 is quickly becoming one of my favorite firearms, like, period of all time. 
I really like the MG34. Opinion on the BT-42 tank that got roof-funded by Japan. Uh, it's cool. It's a really neat, like, uh, modification of, of to BTs. Um, one of the few, like, Finnish original vehicles uh, that there were during World War II. Even though you could argue that it's not really Finnish original because it was it's built on a Russian design, but... Um, I think it's cool. It was a cool solution to a problem. I don't know. I personally... Look, see, look, look, look. All right, like, I'm mounted on a bipod. Like, I'm mounted here, right? Like, this is like, oh, this works. And then I see a target to my right. Oh, turn to my right, and I aim. And then all of a sudden, like, I'm not bipodded anymore. Did you see that? Yeah, it's working now, but you guys see what I mean? Keep your eyes out for that, because this will happen to me a shit ton as we go through this. And then, yeah, that's just nothing there. My favorite gun is the PK. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the PKT? Like the Soviet like machine gun? How long have we been streaming for? Two hours. Okay. Almost 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 on the dot. Actually, yeah, two hours and one minute and eleven seconds. Alright, well, this is where the team is. Oh guys, there are a lot of bad guys over here. Ugh! PK Polymot Kalashnikova. That doesn't tell me Okay. I'm gonna assume you mean the PKT. Or, well, oh, PKT is the, the tank version. So, okay, yes, I think I know what gun you're talking about. Giving me the, the full Russian translation doesn't help, but thank you. So mid-war period, Swedish tanks had armor-piercing Sabo rounds. Can you please tell me that this is true? Because I think that War Thunder might have made that on accurate. I think you mean inaccurate. Um, I have no idea. I know nothing about Swedish tanks. <laughs> I have no idea if that's true or not. I believe it. I, 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 I would believe it. Like, it's not like some kind of like crazy technological breakthrough. Like, Sabo is not that wacky of a concept. Like, the, the idea of Sabo had already existed. Like, I think... Even before World War II, at least on a small scale, even if not like with tanks specifically, um, the concept of Sabo like already existed. It was just who who was going to actually do it. Um, the Americans had Sabo for the 75 millimeter gun on the Sherman. They didn't use it during World War II, from what I know, but um, it existed. Same way uh, the Germans had uh, heat fin stabilized for the Tiger for the 88. But I don't think it saw service in World War II, but I have, I have read, I have literally seen with my own eyes a scan of a period document in German describing uh, the heat fin stabilized developed for the 88mm cannon on the Tiger. To be honest, Czechoslovakia didn't use the L LTBZ uh, that much. The main tank we had was the LVTZ-35. Uh, Whereas the 38 was export was for export, the Germans made it famous. Yeah, so that was one thing I, I did notice while researching the the L, LVTZ 38 was yeah it was be, it was being marketed in Czechoslovakia at, at the time, but like yeah the Czech military wasn't that interested in it. They were interested. They were like oh that, that that's a neat tank, but they weren't issuing any bids. Like they weren't saying oh yeah build it for us and we're we're going to adopt it. Um, so they started asking a lot of foreign markets. Notice how I didn't hit that guy a single time, right? I mean, I know he died, but still. Um, I didn't kill him. Um, but yeah, they went to a lot of different foreign markets. Obviously, they went to Sweden. Um, they also went to the Middle East. I don't know if it was Turkey or... I mean, uh, then the Ottoman Empire, I guess. Wait, no, no, this is World War II, so not the Ottoman Empire. <laughs> Edda, you need to get your two world wars straight in your head. Um, sorry, yeah, Turkey... I don't know if it was them or if it was like an Iran-Iraq or like a Saudi Arabia type thing. Again, you could say, um, that country didn't exist during World War II, and yeah, I don't know the Middle East. I don't know the structure of the Middle East as it was in World War II. Alright, yeah, that's not gonna work. Um, point being, yeah, they advertised it out to a lot of different people. Um, but yeah, the Czech, the Czech military themselves was not, like, super, you know, they weren't, like, clawing for it. And then they get invaded, and then the Germans come by, and they're like, hey, this is pretty cool. And then the Germans used it. I made it famous but the but the the 38 is the better design between the 38 and the 35 iran and turkey existed during world war ii my thought was saudi arabia did saudi arabia exist during world war ii 
I, for some reason, there's a piece of me that wants to say no, but I also am stupid as fuck. I'm also, like, really dumb, and I don't understand how any of you listen to anything I say and give me any sort of credit for being a voice of authority on anything. I'm gonna head out. Thanks for pre coming by, Saxophone Enjoyer. We appreciate you being on the stream. Wasn't Iran called Persia back then? Um... I don't know. That's just what Westerns call it. Oh, okay. I don't- I mean, I'm not- I am far from an authority to speak on Middle Eastern history. That guy mowed me down. The Hungarians has Swedish tanks. Yeah, somebody left a comment about that on um, on my World of Tanks video when I talked about the Toldi, and they were like, uh, Toldi wasn't Hungarian, it was Swedish. And it's like, yeah, but, like, you know what I fucking mean. Like, I fucking hate... <sighs> I sometimes hate the YouTube comments. <laughs> Which, it, it's not a fair comparison because I also personally do that type of shit, so I can't be mad, but... Hold on, that's a war. What are we still doing here? Oh yeah, planes. Wait, that's right, Chad. I totally forgot to spawn it as a plane. Oh, uh, it's okay. We've lost stuff. Yeah, I don't want to play with the MG34 anymore. It's just, it's not great. Yeah, like Beck says, like it's just the the medium machine guns in this game were done so dirty, and yeah, man, it just sucks. What's the difference between the 35 and the 38? A lot, yeah, um, mostly the suspension, um, or rather, like, the road wheels. Actually, I think the suspension itself was different, too, at least by a little bit. Both tanks used a, a leaf spring suspension, but, uh, yeah, the LTB, the, the 38, used those big, the big road wheels, whereas the 35 used a much more traditional, like a, you know, T26, like a Vickers style I don't want to say Vickers style because, like, a lot of different tanks use that suspension. But a leaf spring suspension where it was the smaller road wheels. It's like T26 type suspension, you know? Like, look at a Vickers E. Look at a T26. Look at any of those tanks. They have, like, that. You can just look at pictures of the, of the, the 35 and the 38. You can see the differences. What do you think about Brazilian tank designs from the 80s? I know nothing about them. But they seem cool. Like, the I think the Osorio I've seen. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm sorry, but... Uh, I sort of tank. Um, yeah, isn't this the tank that beat the Abrams in Trials? That everyone was, like, gushing their pants over? It looks cool. But, like, I know nothing about... Yeah, I just found... in I clicked Google Images, and in Google Images, there's the thumbnail, and I can tell it's a Cone of Arc video, and on the thumbnail it says, How Brazil Beat the Abrams. So, yeah, this is the tank that everyone... Everyone gushes about. Muff Rebums. Yeah, man, Muff Rebums. I, I can't believe how pe people are, like, unable to accept the fact that, um, like, the Abrams is not a god tank. That's crazy, you know? That's some, some people just don't, like, understand that. We have the first enemy and, and also, mostly what people, what people fight back with me on, that I have been starting to argue, is, like, the Abrams is actually, like, low-key like really becoming like not so good um and i think there's a reason why we're moving to m1a3 because uh, uh you know just patching a 1980s tank with modern technology and it's just kind of working barely but it's really starting to show its cracks i i suppose the proper uh the proper uh, what, what's what's the the phrasing I'm looking for? The proper, professional, historical, academic. The proper academic term would be technical debt. The Abrams, I think, I think the Abrams technical debt is coming due. Really fast. So, and I think a lot of people just can't accept that. And, and it's like if you think about it, like Leopard two A eight is out. Although, to be fair, the, the Germans and the French are both moving towards this EMBT thing, which will basically be the European version of the T-14, and so we'll see how that goes. Um, and then Britain's got the Challenger 3, which, I mean, yeah, Challenger 3, but at least they finally moved to a smoothbore cannon, so they're making progress. 
Um, so, I mean, yeah, like, you know, like, uh, what I'm saying is that these other countries are actually doing stuff, whereas we've just kind of... I mean, yeah, M1A2 set V4 was in development, but, like, I mean, you know, like, was it really that... I think, as always, history plays out exactly as it was meant to. The Abrams is getting outdated. Like, the Abrams' technical debt is coming due. As such, we are now developing... We have cancelled SEP V4 because we realized SEP V4 is just continually piling on that technical debt, and we're changing course to M1A3, which I do think is definitely the right move. I really hope, I really hope that M1A3 is, like, drast drastically different from M1A2. I really hope so. Like, I want crewless turret, I want trophy, I want a dr an onboard drone, I want, like, crazy new optics, I want, like, a totally new manual of arms. Like, I want M1A3 to be a different tank. Because that's what we need. We, we can't just take the set V4 package and then be like, oh, well, we're changing a couple things and then pretend it's a new tank. So, yeah, I'm in, I am in full support of autoloader, crewless turret, everyone down in the hall, go down, take us down to a three-man team, take us down to a three-man crew. I fully support that endeavor. We are dying, by the way. I, that, that was, I was confused. I was so confused. The new Panther looks very futuristic, which is giving propaganda vibes. True. Um, new Panther, the, the Bundeswehr is not interested in the new Panther. You mean Abrams X? No, M1A3. Abrams X is not being adopted by the military. That's not that's not what's happening. The Abrams X was simply a technology demonstrator. It's not being adopted by the U.S. military. It was made as a technology demonstrator um, for the U.S. military, but the idea was the U.S. military would look at Abrams X and then pick and choose the features from Abrams X that they wanted, and then they would go back to General Dynamics and say, can you change this, can you change that, we want this, we like that. Um... But yeah, M1, M1, Abrams X was never meant to be like a legitimate uh, adoption for a tank for the for the military. Now, uh, the K, the KF-51 Panther, I said the same thing about the KF-51 Panther back in the day, where I was like, no, that's not actually like a real tank, it's just a technology demonstrator. But no, KF-51 Panther is actually a real tank, it's just not like the next tank for the Germans. From what I can tell, it's it's like made for a foreign market, it's made for other people to adopt. I don't think Rheinmetall made it for the German military to be a replacement for the Leopard. I think Rheinmetall just made it, and they're just seeing who wants to buy it. Had an argument with a dude about the comment in the comment section about the introduction of the Panther. The guy was saying it was because of the IS-1, even though 207 were built and that Panzer III was better than the T-34. Um, Panzer III was better than the T-34 in a couple of ways, but like I think that's a very blanket statement. Also, no, Panther was created actually as a reaction to the T-34 and the KV, uh, not as a reaction to IS-1. And actually, uh, that's even that's even sillier because I well actually that's not that silly, but. Um, IS-1 was created, obviously had the 85mm gun. IS-1 was the big upgrade to the 85 for the, the Soviet heavy tank lineup of the time. Um, IS-1 was created because of the Tiger. Not that that, yeah, that doesn't really have any bearing on, on what you're saying, but yeah, no, no. Um, Panther was created because of C-34 and KV, and, um, and IS-1 was created because of Tiger. And yeah, that guy's wrong. And then yeah, Panzer III had better ergonomics than... That was a great shot that I just hit there. Um, Panzer III had better ergonomics. Um, it was more reliable out of the gate. Uh, especially at the time of World War II because they had worked out whatever kinks it may have had. Um, it was... Um, I would say I would say the chassis of Panzer III was more versatile than the T-34. Admittedly, the T-34, like, they did do a lot with that. Oh, that's a tank. I'm shooting at a tank right now. Um, admittedly, they did a lot with the T-34 chassis. The T-34 chassis was very versatile, but they kind of did... I feel like they did more with the Panzer III chassis than... Actually, I don't know. Someone actually someone actually might be able to prove me wrong on that. Maybe they're about equal. Because I don't know, like, Panzer III, they did the Stug, but then also T-34-85, they did the SU-100 and whatnot, you know? Yeah, I'm not sure. P Panzer III better than T-34. T-34 had better armor and better firepower, but Panzer III had better pretty much everything else. Although, T-34 was, like, mechanically less complex, I suppose. But it wasn't any more reliable. I think people get really confused about, like, more complex equals less reliable. Like, no, like, German tanks were quite complex. But oftentimes, like, the complexity went somewhere. 
like a lot of people, especially, I, I've been watching a lot of like tank restoration videos, and I've been seeing a lot of cases recently, like these mechanics who rip this stuff open. And they're like, yeah, here's what the Germans did. They did this, that, the other, that, the other. And then, like, the cameraman is like, that seems pretty complicated, don't you think? And they're like, yeah, but, like, it works. Like, it works. It, it ensures reliability. Like, it ensures that it works every fucking time. Like, yeah, it's complicated, but that complication is there for a reason. To make it more reliable. Um, and generally speaking, I think, like... I think the places that German tanks were unreliable are not the same places in which they were complicated. Like, I would say, like, you could say, German transmission, bad. It's like, well, German transmission wasn't necessarily bad. It was the fact that they kept using, like, the same damn transmission on every fucking tank they ever built, including, like, all of their heavy tanks. And yeah, they just built their tanks a little too heavy. Or German engine catch fire. I'm pretty sure it was an issue with, like, the fuel lines or the cooling system, not necessarily the engine itself. I could be wrong, though. So, yeah, just people get so much more of, like complicated therefore unreliable and bad and it's like that's not wouldn't complexity make uh, repairing uh, more lengthy and difficult it depends on what you're doing so when you repair a tank especially like on the field you're not like you're not doing the same thing that a tank restoration team is doing like a tank restoration team has to pull apart every component they not only have to take the road wheels off the tank but they also have to take the road wheels apart and dig in and get all the gruck and grime out of there and restore them to functioning order and that yes might get very complicated like with a german transmission like when you crack the transmission open getting to the gears navigating the gears getting it retuned whatever whatever like yeah that might be a nightmare to do but like on the field you're just gonna rip the transmission out and then put a new transmission in. Like that's how war works, you know. Especially like I work in IT, and I was when I, I was trained and when I did IT schooling and I, when I did classes, they trained us how you know how does RAM work, how does motherboards work, how does here's how to remediate like broken here's how to remediate broken RAM, here's how to do all this stuff. And then once I worked in IT, every single time a user had a problem with their computer, the 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 doctrine was just give them a new computer. Same thing. Like when a German tank rolled back into the rolled back into the uh, into the repair depots, like yeah, they weren't meticulously disassembling the the puzzle work mechanism that was the transmission. They just gave them a new transmission. Now the problem is giving German tanks a new transmission was a nightmare. So yeah, German transmission complicated, I guess so. But the bigger problem is that they were a nightmare to replace. That is a legitimate. That's a legitimate criticism you could have of a German tank. And the same thing with T-34, you'd be like, oh, like, less complicated, therefore easier. Well, er, therefore, um, uh, more reliable. Well, again, like, there's instances throughout history where a, a, a component being too simple was it was a negative, where it, it, you know, wasn't resilient enough, it wasn't reliable enough, it wasn't strong enough um, to resist whatever it needs to hit, whenever it, whatever it needs to resist. Um, or it's not, like, durable enough. Like, it can last for a while, but after a certain number of miles, the part just wears out because it was too simple, it was too cheap, da 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 So there's a balance to be struck, and I think too many people pick, like, expensive and uh, complicated equals unreliable and unnecessary, and then cheap and fast also equals unreliable and unnecessary. But there's a balance. Expensive and complicated things can be genuinely good and actually more reliable, but then also, yeah, cheap and fast things can be cheap and fast, and not well put together, and not last very long. What parts of the tank were were just uh, were commonly just repaired with tools in the field instead of outright replacing engine? Um, yeah, probably an engine. Um, suspension, like replacing suspension springs, replacing suspension arms might have been a thing. Road wheels, definitely swapping out road wheels, uh, sprockets. I, th I think once you get into something like an engine is an interesting one because I think there are certain things that you were that you would mediate with an engine that you could do just on the field with hand tools like oh like you know like the fucking fuel line needs tightening or something or we need to replace the spark plugs like that stuff is that's stuff that you can do I reckon if, if we went and found a German manual for like the HL 120 or whatever I'm sure we would see in the manual that they would say like they probably had designated levels for how serious the issue was and whether you should take it to a mechanic or I also I saw that piece of dynamite on the ground and I still ran into it um whether the issue would be serious enough that like yes we recommend you take this to a mechanic or this issue is not serious enough that we we believe you should be able to re remediate this on the field and so I'm sure we could look at German manuals and we could find out exactly where they drew that line but yeah I would guess like you know things like fuel lines spark plugs um uh, some of that stuff is probably like easily replaceable. If you pull the engine out, you get access to the clutch, you get access to uh, the heads. You could probably replace a piston, maybe, on the field if you really had to. But if it's a thing where like, 
like the crankshaft is cracked or like the engine block has received damage like nah at that point you got to replace the engine that's you go back to, you go back to the field or you go back to the depots and they give you a new engine although again at that point it might actually be faster to just give you a new tank that also happens like the americans did that too and the soviets did it too as well where like yeah like we've got a crack in the lower hull we've lost like three road wheels and the engine is like just chugging like there's a lot wrong with this tank Okay, just give them a new fucking tank. Like, we've, we've got a million Shermans. Just give them a new tank. Like, we're not gonna... It can either... We can either spend, like, 15 hours mending this tank, or we can just give you a new one and send you back out there. I think that also happened a lot more often than we, than we give credit for, which also, potentially, would be another issue with German tanks, is that the Germans didn't have that luxury. Uh, in some instances, like Panzer III, Panzer IV, Panther, probably, um, it may very well have been... Although, actually, I don't know. There's a lot of photos of, like... You know, Panther crews ripping out transmissions and things like that. That might just be a doctrinal thing. Like, maybe the Germans valued more. We're not just going to give you a new tank. We're going to act like you have to mend your tank as much as you possibly can until it fucking explodes. Um, especially in the late war when, like, spare parts and stuff were really, really hard to come by. I Like, after 1943, I would probably reckon that German crews were encouraged to mend their tanks as much as they could before just being issued a new one. Whereas, like, the Americans and the Soviets, I reckon would have no problem just being like yeah just give him a new tank like fuck it just give him a new sherman we got another one over there like borrow uh borrow this tank from company d or the, and that's the thing like you have a company and then like the company is at base and then okay i need two platoons to go run this mission platoon a what's your status uh we're currently fixing the transmission on our sherman okay platoon a take a sherman from platoon d and then platoon a platoon b is at full uh full status so platoon a go steal a sherman from platoon d or maybe go steal a transmission from platoon d and then platoon a and b are now up to full strength you two platoons go do this mission like that's how that works they would have found ways around it panther engine fire from hill panther engine panthers engine fires i can't remember exactly what caused them i'm inclined to say fuel lines but like i don't know like that's just kind of me um I'd have to remember. I think I, was, I think it was overheating actually. I think the the uh, I think the Panther engine overheated easily. It was a cooling issue. Um, but from what I know, it was it was like yeah, like if you analyze the Battle of Kursk, like a lot of Panthers caught fire during the Battle of Kursk. But that's also because the Battle of Kursk was the Panthers' debut. Like the the, the Panther was completed, and the first thing they did with it was they sent it to Kursk. Ferdinand was the same way, or Elephant. You know, Ferdinand eventually Elephant. Um, its debut was the Battle of Kursk. And so, yeah, like, that was a massive tank battle that took incredible tolls on both sides. And so a tank like the Panther that was brand new, a lot of kinks still to be worked out, taking part in the most violent tank battle in all of World War II, like, yeah, those numbers aren't gonna, that's not gonna look very good. Those numbers are gonna, those numbers are gonna suck. Um, but also, like, yeah, Panther, they, they, they fixed those issues, um... I wouldn't say relatively quickly, but they fixed them. I think the final drives was really the only issue that, like... Because, with Sarah, they made you squad leader because I wasn't, like, issuing orders and being, like, an active squad leader. I'm sorry, buddy. Oh, thank you. Alright, I'll issue an order. Defend, defend B. There's a guy here trolling. Got him with my Webley. I'm sorry, Beck. You died. Just a moment. Plus, it means it's gonna be harder than repairing. Yeah, we we kind of just had that conversation. I'm I'm catching back up on um, on chat messages that I didn't read a little while. I remember hearing somewhere that the Tiger had a crew intercom system or something like that that was very fragile and could be taken out with a heavy penetrating shot. Um, it was pretty common in German tanks to have an internal intercom system. Like the Panzer IV had literally like a series of tubes. It was like you would speak into the tube and it would run your voice down to like the gunner or um, something like that. The Panzer IV had that. Um, Sturmgeschutz had a, a signal bell, which was, I think, they introduced it in the Stug D, I want to say? Um, where they introduced a signal bell, which is like a little electrical, like you would flick an electrical thing and, and it would, um, and it would send a signal to somebody, uh, to, to communicate something. I forget exactly what it was or what it was used for. Um, uh, the loader in a lot of German tanks had, um, I know the Panther, or the Panzer IV had this, and I think it's the kind of thing where, like, they have this feature, but it was pretty standard. Like, they included this in a lot of their tanks. Um, I know Panzer IV had this, but it had a feature where the loader, the loader literally had a button, and the gunner had a light next to his, uh, optic. 
And so when the gun tube was empty, or when, I think uh, when the trigger had been pulled and the gun had, had gone off, because it was an electrically fired trigger for the gun, um, for the KWK, um, both the 37 and the 40. Um, it was electrically fired trigger, so when you fired, the light next to the gunner's optic would go red to signal you have fired and the chamber is empty. Um, and then the loader would load a shell, and the loader had a button on the inside of the turret on his side of the tank. He had a button that he would press that button, and it would turn that light next to the gunner from red to green. And I think I think even like a buzzer would go off. I forget. In a lot of in a lot of depictions, there's like a buzzer that goes off too. But the loader would would press a button, and it would indicate to the gunner the round the round is loaded. And that is the essence of German complication. The Americans and like the Americans, the American solution was just scream up as loud as you can. Load the shell into the gun, and then just go up as loud, like oh, as loud as you can, or uh, kick the gunner as well. That would also happen a lot. Like um, you would load the shell, and then you would like tap the gunner on the shoulder or something like that, and that works perfectly fine. But the Germans had to over-engineer this like signal system. The gunner, the, the loader, had a button that he would press that would flick a light next to the gunner, so that the gunner, without any communication from the loader or anything, like the gunner just knew, buzz, light goes green, there's a round in the tube, I'm ready to fire, I'm ready to go. I think it also, I think it was also integrated into a safety system, so I think also, like, the gun, uh, like, there was, like, a, there was a safety, like, the gun wasn't primed to fire until the, until the loader, uh, hit that button, so it literally was, like, the loader hits that button, and then the trigger goes live, there's a, there's a shell in the tube, and the gunner has his light go green, so all at once, with one button pressed, the loader can tell everyone, guns up, we're ready to fire, um, and that's just, that's complicated. Like, that's kind of unnecessary. Like, you don't really need to do that. But they did. And it worked. It was good. Like, it, it was it was nice. Um, and then same thing, the driver on the Panzer IV, and I think the Tiger had this as well, the driver on the Panzer IV, above his uh, visor, actually, somebody correct me in the comments and said it was below his visor, but tomato, tomato. Somewhere around the, uh, the, the driver's vision optic, there was a little blue light that would uh, shine if the turret of the vehicle had traversed beyond the profile of the vehicle. So if the, if the turret was traversed, say, to like the 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock, and the gun was overhanging the side of the hull. So then the driver had a little blue light that would uh, light up in his in his area, so that without any, you know, without any communication from the commander, without anyone having to tell him, without him needing to be aware of where the turret is at all times, just that light glows blue, and the driver knows, oh, hey, the gun is turned over the hull, the side of the tank, so navigating tight spaces, I should be more careful, because I'm, the gun barrel is... Uh, is outside the profile of the vehicle. So anyway, yeah. So the, I, I, when you suspect like internal electrical communication systems, I in, that's what I interpret. That's what I'm imagining that person that means when they say that. And yeah, I could imagine a, a fucking getting hit with a raunchy HE shell could probably dislodge a couple cables or snap, break a couple lights, and then those what the Germans would have probably called internal communication systems go out. But then, but then when that happens, you just default to kicking the loader to let him know, or kicking the gunner to let him know the gun's loaded, or communicating the driver. I mean, every German tanker crew still had the internal comms. They could still talk to each other. So it's the kind of thing where it's like, oh, like, the Tiger had this, had such a weird, complicated communication system that could be knocked out with an HE shell. No. It had an, it had a somewhat unnecessary internal comm system with all these lights and switches and things that could be knocked out with an HE shell. But if that happened, you could just you could just talk to each other. So these things are just usually not that big of a deal. Wouldn't that mean that if the loader's button was destroyed, wouldn't that mean the gun won't fire? Uh, there would have been a manual trigger as well, like uh, on somewhere on the gunner's handle. There would have been uh, like a there's a, a, the electrical solenoid trigger would have been the main way to do it. But every single tank would have had a backup uh, mechanical trigger that you could have hit if the main trigger either died if something happened. I don't know if, like, if the loader's button was destroyed, would that mean that, like, the gun wouldn't be able to fire? There may have been other ways to, uh, to get the, the solenoid trigger to go live. Uh, it may have not just been the gunner's button, I don't know for sure, or the loader's button. Um, but they're definitely, 100%, the solution to that would have been, at the very least, to use the mechanical trigger. Or the, um, because all tanks would have had that. No wonder the German tanks took so long to make, they had, they had fragile cables. Maybe. I mean, eh, cables are just, I mean, cables are cables. Like, that's also, that's just a generic weak point. Like, that's just it, man. You just, uh, like, cables are cables. Like, you can't really have, like, good cable technology. Although, actually, I will say, that is an area of research that the Americans dumped a lot of time into. Um, the chieftain testifies that in the archives, he saw, like, 
boxes and boxes full of like ordnance department doing research on the effects of um, humidity on on wiring uh, inside of a tank. Um, specifically, you know, like like uh, tropic humidity and whatnot, preparing for like a Pacific theater environment uh, combat zone. Oh god, there's more. There's more guys. I'm sorry, Beck. You got baited so hard. He's gonna come around the other side. Where is this guy, dude? As if on cue. I kick option is just better and cheaper, and it is. And like that's the thing. Like just the um, like just the Germans were the ones who thought of that sort of thing. And actually, that comes that goes as far back as World War One. The A7V had very similar things. Like the A7V also had like a series of like switches that the commander could flick, and it would light up different lights around the inside of the tank to tell different crew members different things to direct the crew. Like literally, like communicating with the crew, not like through Morse code, but like you know, if you're a loader and then the commander flicks a switch and there's a light above your head that glows blue, then you know, oh, the commander just turned on my blue light above my head. He's signaling me to do to do my job. Like, there would have been training. There would have been, you are the loader of the A7V, and when the light above you goes blue, that means that the commander is telling you to do this thing. And then the commander had his uh, layout of switches, and he would flick switches, and he would turn on lights around the tank to tell different crew members what to do. Because World War One, that was a genuine problem, right? Tanks were incredibly, incredibly loud, and uh, there was no ear protection, no internal comms, and um, a lot of fucking people in the crew. I mean, the A7V has a crew of, like, what, eight or nine? So... It's a leftover from the A7V, mostly. Uh, the idea of all these little lights and bips and bobs. Um, but yeah, and in, in aspects like that, the A7V was actually like a pretty advanced tank for World War I. It was just built on the chassis of a tractor, and so that limited them a lot. Because that's all... I mean, to be fair, most tanks of World War I were just built on tractors. But yeah, the Germans were doing that as far back as the A7V. So it would, it would, just, it may, it would make sense that as time goes on, the Germans would say, hey, that was like a neat thing that we did with the A7V, so like, let's just keep doing that. Whereas other countries didn't do that with a lot of their tanks in World War One, and so they, they just didn't do it. You find that a lot, like as you study tank history and you see like when tank, when certain countries started doing certain things, like like quirks that they were known for in World War Two, you go back and you're like, oh, like they actually started doing that because that's just the way they've always done things. Um. Like the Americans, for example. Like I, I, I've been, re I'm reading about like the Grant and the Lee, right? And the British, uh, obviously having an issue with the the M3 Lee in the fact that there was a separate radio operator who sat down in the hall with the rest of the crew, and his whole job was to operate the radio. Um, and the British were like, "No, that's like that's goofy. We want the radio up in the turret, and the commander uses the radio." So, obviously, like, nowadays we look back on that and go, yeah, the British were totally right. Like, having a totally separate crew member as a radio operator is, like, kind of goofy. Although the Germans did it with all their tanks, and they worked out pretty well. And the Americans did it, too, uh, in, in the inner war, and then kind of in, kind of in, uh, in World War II, but kind of not really. Um, there, was, there was position for radios in the bow, the bow position of the Sherman. And that's, that's where I'm going with this. So, in the interwar, the British developed a lot of tanks, and... It, they're they're di like a lot of like you know like the Vickers light tanks and whatnot where it's like it's like a two man tank, you know you got like one guy and the other guy, and in those two man tanks, your your commander is gonna have to be the guy who operates the radio like that's just how it is, so because of the way the British designed tanks in the interwar, for them the commander was the guy who operated the radio like they have they had never really needed a separate radio operator, so when the Americans had a separate radio operator they were a bit like. Erm, what? This is like kind of. This is kind of silly. This is not how we do things. And then on the flip side, the Americans, like when the Americans are developing their first tanks with radios. Yeah, America did have like two man tanks and whatnot. But like if you look at like, like Stuart and whatnot, or the the tanks that America built in the mid 1930s, um, they put the radio. They they always had a dude who sat next to the driver, and his job was to operate the radio. And um, that's just how American tanks were in in the mid 1930s, and especially the M3 Lee comes from the M2, and the M2 medium tank was literally just an upscaling of the M2 light. Uh, the Americans develop, or they adopt, the Americans adopt the Stuart in 1935, um, 
And so, uh, and the Stuart, adopted in 1935, was one of those tanks where they had a dude who sat next to the driver, and in the Stuart, his job was to operate the radio. Like, and that's, that's just how they did it. So when they upscale the Stuart to the M2, there's a dude who sits next to the driver who operates the radio. That's just like, for America, that's just how it's done. And then when they go from the M2 to the M3, they have to figure out well, where do we put the radio operator? Because again, that's just always how they've done it. And then in the Sherman, they have that space. Like the bow gunner, again, in the bow gun space for the Sherman, um, there was space for radios to go there. I think in practice, they only did it on command tanks. But like theoretically, the bow gunner of the Sherman was also kind of a, a pseudo radio operator, just as they were, say, in German tanks. Um, German tanks, the only, the only country that I know that really stuck to that was Germany. Like Germany, throughout the entire war, I'm pretty sure, always maintained. There's a dude who sits next to the driver who operates about a bow mounted machine gun. And um, and operates the radio, but like that, like it was always that was always the case for them. The Soviets bounced around a lot with it. The Soviets were on the right track. The Soviets in the T thirty four. I mentioned this in my video on the T thirty four, the early development of the T thirty four. The radio was down in the hall because again, I think that's where it was for the BTs for the T twenty six. Beck, I'm not ignoring you. I promise. I'm just I'm in the middle of stuff. I'm like I'm rambling right now. You can't interrupt a man who's rambling. Uh, you cannot interrupt a tank enthusiast as he is rambling. I saw what you said. How you can hit enter and scroll up and um, and I can see the chat. But don't worry, Beck. I'm I'm not ignoring you. I'm just in the middle. I'm deep in thought, and one trail of thought leads to the next, and I and I have to keep going. <laughs> um, where was I? T thirty four. So yeah, T thirty four. Uh, when the T thirty four is being developed. The initial idea is like, oh, put a, put the radio down in the hole, once again, to be operated by a bow machine gunner, a guy who sits next to the driver and and operates a radio. Very quickly on, the ABTU, which is like the Soviet equivalent of the armored board, the ABTU comes in and says, we don't like that. The radio down in the hole, um, oh, wait, shit, I'm sorry, hold on. Wait, yes, 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 no, yes, 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 yes. I'm, I'm correct, I'm correct. The ABTU says, we don't like that. Can you move the radio up into the turret? Because we would like the, the commander to be the guy who operates the radio. Like, that's what we want. And it went so far as, like, they designated the commander as the radio operator. So the ABTU would, would go back to the factories and say, Hey, like, we love the A20, the A32. Like, these designs are great. But the radio operator is going to be the commander. And if the radio is down in the hull with the bow machine gunner, then how is the commander supposed to access the radio? Like, the way they addressed it was that, like, the radio is currently... In the radio's current position, it is inaccessible to the radio man, because they envision that as the commander. And then time and time again, I cannot tell you how many times I, I read back through over and over again, pretty much every single time they evaluated the T-34, there was always a note in there from the ABTU about, please, for the love of God, move the radio into the turret. The radio operator can't fucking access it, because he's in the turret and the radio's in the hull. Please move the radio. And they never did. And then T-34 came out, and then they, it was a bit too late. I think it was, it was, they eventually tried, they had to get a smaller radio set. Because again, because the hulls of the T-34 was uh, sloped sideways, so it created that space issue. That's why they never did it. Like, the ABTU kept asking for it, and then at one point, the factories pushed back, and they go, we can't. Based on the way the tank is designed, we cannot fit a radio in that position. We could fit this other intercom system that has, like, a worse transmission range, and like we have a worse radio that we can use, but it's smaller, uh, and it would fit. And then they were like, no, we don't want that. We would rather have a good radio. Um, and then right in 1941, like right when the Germans invade, a new radio becomes available that they could put into the T-34's hull. But of course, 1941, they get invaded and they can't really just do that now. So radio in the hull of the T-34, once again, or radio in the T-34, um, once again becomes, um, it, they, they push it further down the road. Because like, oh shit, now we're being invaded. So now we really got to get our shit together. So... All this is to say, um, yeah, radio being in the hull of a lot of tanks was just the way a lot of people did it. The British were on the right track. They had a radio operator who was their commander, and when they got the M3, that was their complaint, and they changed that and made a better variant of the Lee. The, the M3 Grant is objectively better than the Lee. Um, the Americans, the French, I mean, God, the French with the B1 Bis. The Americans and the French make the same mistake where the B1 Bis and the M3 Lee, where the B1 Bis also has like an entire like corner of the tank that were just the little radio operator guy just sits in that corner and he just operates the radio. That's his whole job. Um, so yeah, the Americans, the French, and then at first the Russians um, are all stuck on the 
guy sits next to the driver and operates the radio. Oh, Ger and the Germans are stuck on it the whole war. They, they never get away from that. Um, like, even, like, Tiger II and Panther have, like, radio between the driver and the Falconer. And then the Soviets, like, have that realization, and they try to change it, but they get invaded and they can't implement it until later in the war, when they have time to actually perfect the T-34. Aw, Beck. Well, appreciate you coming out to stream, man. Appreciate you being here in any capacity, and it was fun playing with you. Hope you can come back. I've heard a lot, and I'm sorry, I've been ignoring chat this whole time. I've been on a rant. I'm sorry to all of you in chat who are asking questions. Uh, I've heard a lot that A7V and Japanese tanks are poorly made when it's actually well made. Um... I can't speak to construction quality, but I can say that both the A7V and Japanese tanks were in certain ways ahead of their time. Like again, like the A7V ergonomically was actually really good for a World War One tank compared to like a, uh, actually I think, uh, I'm not going to speak to the Saint-Chamal, I don't know shit about the Saint-Chamal, but compared to definitely Mark V. Um, Oh, uh, Wisteria, appreciate you being on stream, buddy. Yeah, I'm probably going to call, call it pretty soon. We're almost on three hours. I think I think three hours is going to be a good end point. Appreciate you coming out to stream in any capacity and uh, for playing with us. Um, Yeah, and then uh, Japan has a lot of cool innovations. Uh, the ones that I know off the top of my head are bell crank suspension was actually, for the interwar, actually like a really good suspension system that no one else ever adopted anywhere ever again. And then um, the Japanese hold the record for they were the first country to ever put a diesel engine into a tank. The Polish were the first Europeans to ever put a diesel engine in a tank. But the, the Japanese were the first people on the planet to put a diesel-powered engine into a tank. So W, w Japan for that. America doesn't catch up to the idea until like 1938, like after like the M2, like they're looking at the M2 and they're like, oh, huh, what if we put a diesel engine in the M2? And it's like, bro, Japan figured this shit out like 10 years ago. <laughs> and uh, if you look like a lot of Japanese tanks, like a lot of what Europe develops in like 1934, 1935, similar vehicles were being developed by Japan in like 1928. Like the Japanese were unironically just ahead of the curve. The problem is that once World War II kicks off for the Japanese, World War II is a naval war from their perspective, I mean, and, and right, rightfully so, right? Like the Pacific is their whole theater of operations. And, and their goals are in the Pacific too. Well, I mean, they're invading China, yeah, but they also want to expend their sphere of influence in, in the Pacific. And also uh, the Japanese military, famously, uh, all of their branches, which is to say the army and the navy, fought very hard. And there was, a, there was a huge, like competitive drive between the army and the navy for money, research, development time, et cetera, et cetera. And so when war goes on with America and the Pacific theater really gets really kicks off um, the Navy suddenly has a very strong case to be more important than the army and so the, Jap the Japanese focus on the Navy and the army gets tossed aside so Japan ends up going to war in 1941 with all of these tanks that were designed in like 1935 or earlier and have and have had zero updates since then so hey if World War II had kicked off in like the early 1930s Japan would have been pretty well off I would say, tank-wise. Um, and, I mean, like, investing in their Navy was good. Like, the Japanese Navy was good, as far as I know. Um, so, like, it was it was the right call to make for them at the time. But, I mean, that's just the unfortunate circumstances of America develops the Sherman, and we still have tanks from 1935. <laughs> and that just was, that's just what, what's ended up happening. Also, there was a bit of drama regarding tanks at the time, because Japan has a flip-flop with tanks, much how the, the Germans do the same thing in World War One. We're like, eh, we're interested in tanks, we're not interested in tanks, now we're interested in tanks, now we're not interested in tanks. Japan does the same thing. So Japan is at first not much impressed by the tank. They're kind of like, nah, it's, it's like, that's kind of interesting. They, they followed the German rule, or they followed the Germans at first. After World War One, we're like, eh, like, like it's not that, big, not that big of a deal. Like, tanks are, they're slow, they're cumbersome, they're expensive, they're big, they're, like... Meh, not impressed. And then um, there's uh, one particular, as happens in every single army, there's one particular general who is very gung-ho about tanks. I forget the guy's name. I'm sure somebody can find it. But there's like one one or two particular people in the Japanese army who are like, no, no, like tanks are actually like really good. Like we really should invest in tanks. And there's this bouncing back and forth in the 1920s. Like, eh, our tanks are a good idea. We don't know. We're developing doctrine. We don't know how to use them. Like, even if we built tanks, how would we use them? How would they be useful to us? Like, what does any of this mean? 
And then, like, finally, as it happens in every single country, some dude somewhere finally manages to convince some officer, some bureaucrat in the army somewhere that, like, please just give us a lump of money and, like, two years, and we're just going to build a tank. And, and, like, you can see how you like it. And, like, okay, fine. And they build a tank. Uh, they build a couple tanks. And, like, they, that, like, gets tank development going in Japan. And then they need to invade China. And so they were like, okay, sick. Let's use these tanks. Let's put them to work, and let's invade China. And they invade China with their tanks, and they do really well uh, initially. Japanese tanks like actually kick ass, which makes sense because it's basically like Italy stomping Ethiopia. You know, it's the kind of thing like you know China does not have like a super. I mean, China was at civil war at the time. I'm pretty sure. So they had you know they were focused on a lot of other things besides tank development. So a very lopsided war. Japanese tanks do very well, but then for reasons somewhat outside of the control, outside of the tanks' control, for other reasons, resource shortages. Um, fiercer resistance, heading into the deeper areas of China where the terrain is a bit less tank friendly. For various reasons, just generally speaking, the offensive in China starts not going very well for Japan. And it starts slowing down, they get bogged down in the fighting. And the war starts dragging out, and what's going on, what's going on, why haven't, why hasn't China capitulated, why haven't we finished, what, blah, blah, blah. And then fingers start being pointed. And uh, the tank is one of the casualties of, oh, well, these tanks aren't as good as we thought they were. Like, hey, they performed pretty well, but now, like, long term, we're seeing the effects. Uh, tanks, they get bogged down easily. If they're, you know, not used properly, we can see that, like, they're susceptible to uh, anti-tank guns and infantry-based weapons. Like, eh, like, never mind. You know, we, we change our mind. The whole tank thing, like, we're, we're not interested anymore. And then that's, like, you know, the late 1930s. And then Japan declares war on America. World War II kicks off. The Navy suddenly has a very good case for receiving more development time than the Army does, and it's, it's just kind of the it's just kind of the perfect storm for an anti-tank sentiment in Japan uh, in the late 1930s and the early 1940s. And so Japan has tanks that they were developing in the 1920s and early 1930s, but then by the time World War II happens, uh, they're not interested anymore. They're, they're not as interested anymore. And then the United States shows up with the Sherman, and Japan changes its mind yet again very quickly. And then you get things like the Chinu and all these other projects. Um, but it's not to say, like, people can come back at me and be like, um, they were developing a lot of, like, there were a lot of different ideas for tanks that Japan had in the 1930s. Like, yes, as always, there was always development. They were always experimenting with things, and they were always um, developing stuff, even during those, like, low points that I, would, that I would call them. But generally speaking, as I know it, that is the story of tanks with Japan. And why they were really good at first, but ultimately sucked against things like the Sherman and whatnot. Edda, where do you mainly get your tank info on tanks? Where do you mainly get your info on tanks other than books? Um, YouTube, kind of. Like, uh, the Chieftain is a great source. Um, tank Archives, the guy who runs that blog has a YouTube channel. He explains a lot of cool stuff. Um, on YouTube, you just have to know who to look for. Like, I don't watch, like, Cone of Arc or Laser Pig or... Um, like Spooston or like a lot of those guys nowadays. Like I, I watch like, um, like the Australian, the Oz Armor Museum, the Australian Armor and Artillery Museum, and their restoration series workshop Wednesdays. Um, I watch um, the Chieftain. I watch uh, Military History Visualized. I watch um, Peter Samsonov, his YouTube channel. Like you got to find those 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 history those historian guys and watch them. Like Laser Pig, Cone of Arc, Spooston, like they're great. You know, they'll give you, like, oh, here's this wacky tank that somebody made and why it was or wasn't good. But those other channels will give you a bigger, broader sense of, like, what the fuck was actually the deal with this tank? And that's what I try to do with my channel. Is I don't just give you, like, a was this tank good or bad. I try to give you, like, why. I try to let you... I try to give you guys the power that you see me with. Which is, like, holy shit, how did Edda just go on, like, a 30-minute rant about the development of Japanese tanks in the mid-1930s? Well, I hope, I hope to bestow that upon you with the content that I make. Because a lot of people, like... Cone of Arc and Spooks and those guys, I feel like they don't always go down those roads. And that might be, someone could yell at me and be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Example B. But that's just what I'm saying. Do you watch Oversimplified? Um, yeah, I do, but I, I watch Oversimplified to get an oversimplified understanding. Like, I don't, I don't watch Oversimplified and then come out of it and be like, ah, yes, I'm an expert on the Persian, on the Alexander the Great's conquest of Persia, or whatever. Or like, ah, yes, I am now an expert on Napoleon. Um, but yeah, I, I generally also try to watch like YouTube channels and stuff that go outside of tank history. I try to watch broader historical content as well, because you get a, you learn a lot of things from like broader history, like even like not World War II. Like you learn you learn stuff, like 
studying Napoleon has actually been genuinely useful to me about understanding the distrust between the French military and the French government that was happening in the mid-1930s and led to a lot of really wacky stories with um, French tank development in, um, in, the, in the interwar. And, you know, like, like there's, there's a lot of broader... History is history. And, like, stuff that happened even 100 years ago, you can draw a connection and be like, oh, that's why this thing happened that affected the development of tanks in World War II. So, yeah, I also try to just get a good understanding of, like, the broader history of stuff. And, um, I don't know, I think I'm just good at, like, I think I'm just good at connecting dots. But then, yeah, books are obviously great. I've been, like, all really on a book binge. Ever since I'd finally, like, bit the bullet and bought books. Oh, my God, dude. You learn so much from books. Also, yeah, Nightweed knows. Thank you so much for, um, thank you for coming to stream, buddy. Um, yeah, books are definitely, like, the ultimate source, I would say, on, like, tanks, on, on history. Uh, books are amazing. And then, but other than books, I would say the next, the next tier above books are things like blogs like um afv 50 mags like the the american afv database is a great one um there is a website called sensha which is like kind of a blog about japanese tanks um tankarchives.ca is a great website that again run by peter samsonov he's a uh, a russian canadian so i think i think i don't know if he was born in russia but he's, he's of russian descent he lives in canada and he can translate like russian original documents and he knows how to navigate the russian archives so he goes into the russian archives and translates stuff into english and then and talks about it um a lot of my my t-34 video my um video on the development of the t-34 t-34 utopian, utopian tank t-34 a majority of that video was taken from one of his books that i have right here i would grab it but it's beneath it's underneath a pile of all of these other books it would be a bitch it would be a nightmare to get it out of there i guess i could but mo that most of that video was from his book on the t-34 Excuse me, friends. <laughs> uh, this one. Designing the T-34 by Peter Samsonov. Great book. Highly recommend it. Um, if you're looking for T-34 stuff. He has another book on the IS series, which I think is about the same thing, like going into super nerdy detail into the development of um, the IS series of tanks. And I really want to get that book because I want to understand the KV and the IS more. The Super Pershing looked good in paper, but the only thing that was really good of was taking out one Tiger and a couple of Panther IV. Panther IV is not a tank. I assume you mean Panzer IV. <laughs> um, also, it is heavily disputed that what the, Pan the Super Pershing actually destroyed was a Tiger. Um, there's this claim that it was a Tiger II, even. But again, that claim is heavily disputed. There's, like, no actual evidence from it. And... Um, most people just assume that it was probably like a Sturmgeschutz or something, or a Panzer IV. But it is, it is confirmed that the, the Super Pershing, there was only one Super Pershing, by the way. You kinda, your comment makes it seem like the Super Pershing was like a serial development thing that they made multiple of. The Super Pershing was a one-off field modification of a Pershing. Um, all, T26E4 is a, is a separate thing, but t they took a T26E4 and then added all, did that, all that add-on armor to it. That um, Belton Cooper actually worked on that, um, guy who wrote the book Death Traps. And... Um, that was like a one-off. Like, they only did that once. That was not in any way like a serial production thing. I'm trying to counter-snipe this guy with irons. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. No, I'm dead. Um, yeah, so they, didn't, they did not make like multiple Super Pershings. But the one Super Pershing that did exist, um, it is confirmed that it, it scored at least three kills. But it's not... I, I would have to dive into the d data to like recall. But as far as I know, it's not confirmed what three things it killed like sources agree that it that it scored three kills but sources differ on what those three kills were again like some people say it was one of them was a tiger two a lot of people say it was just panzer fours some people would probably say that like one of them was a truck I'm, I'm sure like i'm sure you find all sorts of super super varying stories and that's why that stuff's not reliable and i would just say it scored three kills i don't know what it killed but it scored three kills and that's good enough for me that still proves that it was a worthwhile tank i guess um but yeah, Super Pershing does look good on paper. I mean, any time you take a tank and then say, give it more armor and give it more gun, yeah, that looks good on paper. Oh, 
Also, I will be joining the Discord. I why I haven't yet. Yeah, we knows I recommend that. A lot of people, um, a lot of people have joined the Discord, and there's good tank knowledge out there too. All right, we're almost at three hours, boys. Don't worry. You don't have to endure the suffering much longer. Okay, so we have to win. Oh, I have to be using the Lian field. I'm so fucking dumb. Chat, I'm so sorry. Give me irons on this as well. Back up. Oh, this round's about to end, isn't it? Oh, no, we're still... We still got plenty of time this round. Higher call is a good book. Yeah, it's one about the uh, that bomber, that um, German pilot who didn't shoot down the bomber, right? How do you think tanks would have developed if these high-penning rounds, heat slash APDS, would have not gone anywhere? So then what, what takes its place, I'm asking? I, I would, I would, my response to that would be, so then, if not that, then what? Like, just HVAP? Like, HVAP is, is the best we do? Also, yeah, my aim was terrible there, I recognize that. That was just me being actually bad at the game. Um, okay, so we don't have heat FS. Or yeah, okay, we don't have heat at all, are you saying? So, so chemical munitions, basically, like, no heat, no hash, chemical munitions go out the window, and no Sabo, no APDS. How do I think tanks would have developed? They probably would have... I think we would have seen, um, I think we would have seen the heavy tank dick measuring contest, like, go even harder than it did in the Cold War, because what made heavy tanks unviable, and especially super heavy tanks, what made them not viable was the fact that you could build a super heavy tank with... 200 300 millimeters of just pure steel armor but a chemical warhead like heat or um uh, armor piercing discarding sabo could still penetrate that theoretically so then the idea is well we're making our tanks super big and super slow for no reason because their armor can still be defeated with these modern high penning ammos ammunition types so i think with the, without the threat of chemical warheads like heat things like the bazooka and so like when you say by the way like i hope you understand the implications of what you're saying when you say that like heat doesn't exist you are eliminating the panzerfaust you're eliminating the bazooka you're eliminating the piet and you're eliminating the rpg7 or the rpg2 becomes the rpg7 you're eliminating the anti the tow the anti-tank guided missile the atgm essentially like the removal of heat like the removal of, of chemical based like plastic explosive chemical based um anti-tank munitions you are painting an incredibly broad brush by doing that which is fine I mean, if that's your hypothetical if that's what your hypothetical is then that's what it is so i'm going to take your hypothetical at, at that value that that is what you're insinuating if that's the case then yeah definitely i think we would have seen the the heavy tank dick measuring contest go even further like we would have seen even more development into things like um like is3 um like the t-34 and the t-29 in american service Things like uh, the Conqueror in uh, in British service. Um, yeah, I, th I think tanks would, would be heavier and just like with super big guns. Oh, I was looking at chat. I have to rack the bolt. That was awkward. Do you think the 105 going on the Booker is big enough to take out a T90 front on? I don't think it's meant to do that. So I think that question is... Alright, to be an asshole, I think that question is irrelevant because I don't think the Booker is expected to do that. However, comma, yes, I actually do. Ow. I think, like, game theory... That's just a theory! A game theory! Here's a game theory, and I am so ready to be proven wrong on this. I'm not going to lie to you guys that, me personally, I think, opinion incoming, here come, where, where, uh, opi opinion alert, opinion alert, edit 320 opinion alert, er, 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 take this with a grain of salt. I don't think that, like, like, we don't live in World War II anymore, like, rounds don't ricochet anymore. Like, APDS does not ricochet. And I think with such, like, it either pens or it doesn't. Which is fair, but, but I guess that doesn't really val that doesn't prove my point at all. Sorry. Opinion alert, here I go. 
I think that all tanks are capable of killing each other in today's day and age. I think APDS, I, I think in the race between firepower and protection, I think firepower has the upper hand and has had the upper hand for a very long time. I think our cannons, our ammunition, all that, on any tank, even at a 105 level, I think has gotten so good all round. I really do believe that, like, like I think a Leopard 1 could kill a T90. And somebody's going to go, I don't think, no, that's not true. The ammunition they use only has 453 millimeters of pen. And the ERA plus the angle plus the thickness of the composite on the T90 is 600 millimeters of effective armor. Therefore, it wouldn't... Sure, but I think real life is just... I mean, fuck, we saw Bradley take out a T90. And granted, it didn't take out that T90 by penetrating it. It took it out by disabling the optics and then pummeling it into submission, submission until the crew bailed. But I do believe, like, I do believe that, like, modern tank cannons are good enough. And ammunition developed for those guns is good enough. But yeah, I, I, think an M I think an M10 Booker could kill a T90 from the front. Even if we're not going to shoot at the front plate, I mean, you could still shoot the turret. A T90 could, a, 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 a Booker could definitely go through a T90's turret, I would reckon. Now again, my favorite era of tank history is 1934 to 1941. I am very much a World War II guy. I would be the last person on Earth to claim that I know anything about modern tanks. And also, what I have just said is an opinion, so I am very happy to be proven wrong on that. But in my opinion, in my unexperienced, I don't know fuck all about modern tanks, except for what I do know. Yeah, that's that, That's my answer to your question, in my opinion. Was the Super Pershing disabled in combat? Um, I don't remember. What kills heavy tanks is the speed. I think with modern armor and guns, you can make a heavy tank that has enough armor to not justify the weight. It's just the speed that's what kill them. Well, it's... Yes. I mean, yeah. Because if you have a tank that can't go fast, then, like, what's the point? You might as well bunker, you know? Um. Yes, but I, I think the solution that we found to it practically is we have tanks that have the effective armor thickness of, you know, what in World War II would be considered a heavy tank. Um... But we can achieve those results with lighter composite materials. And so therefore, we can get heavy tank protection with medium tank speed. I have maintained, I've said before, a long time ago, but I, I still believe this, I still, I have maintained that throughout history, the biggest leaps in the, the biggest leap in tank technology, for the most, in, in tank, in like developing new kinds of tanks, has been in the engine. Like, once engine technology makes a leap, we're like, oh shit, now we can create a 60-ton tank and it doesn't crumble under its own weight. And it, we, have, we have now developed engines that can actually power a 50, 60-ton tank. Now, all of a sudden, we start developing new tanks. Because, like, you guys, you guys do realize that the Abrams is, like, 70-something tons, right? Like, you guys do realize that. I'm sorry, whoever is here. I'm, I'm being schizophrenic right now. I want to go this way. Um, the Abrams is incredibly fucking heavy. And yet... It's, like, top speed is not very bad, because engine technology has progressed such that we can do that. And we don't have to make that sacrifice anymore. Whereas in World War II, you know, in World War II, a 60-ton tank was a problem. Whereas today, we don't really have to worry about that anymore. You probably go first. You're, you're a heavy breakthrough tank, pal. You should probably go first. Oh, thank you for doing that. There's a guy next to me. And that's one of the reasons why I think I say that, like, without any of those high-penning ammunition types, like, if you're getting rid of heat and you're getting rid of APDS, another reason why I suspect the heavy tank dick measuring contest would continue is because then we would have no reason to develop composite armor. I mean, yeah, like, the Americans and stuff were experimenting with it. I guess, I suppose we would end up developing, like, even without, uh, like, APDS, we would still have, like, the German 128 and shit like that, like, these big cannons that we would put on our tanks. And we still have HVAT, we still have high-velocity rounds. So maybe composite armor still would have happened. And the Americans were experimenting with composite armor, but again, they were doing that because of the Panzerfaust. So if we eliminate heat from the equation, then 
like America's not developing concrete armor or sorry um composite armor on the Sherman um to defeat Panzerfaust so that yeah that's not happening it's an it's an interesting conundrum I think I think things would change but not that much actually but yeah I, I think the heavy tank dick measuring contest would continue a bit longer than it did originally but otherwise I think not that much and I know you don't know anything about them, but can you agree that Leopard 2 is hot? I used to be a Leopard 2 stan until I discovered the Ariette, and now I'm an Ariette stan. Disabling a tank is effectively a kill? Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that, that's like, that's how that works, yeah. If you disable it, if you knock out a tank, and also, like, people forget, like, you know, real life is not a video game, and when a tank's tracks gets knocked out in real life, like, yeah, you can't just repair that shit within the safety confines of your own tank. And also... That's a job that takes hours in real life, whereas in a video game it takes, I mean, you know, seconds. So I think, like, in real life, if you shoot a tank in its tracks, if, if you track a tank, if you get tracked in real life, you're pretty much done. Like, like it's pushed over for you. Unless your team, unless, like, you win whatever battle engagement that you're currently, like, engaged in, and then you can get support from your, um, from your team and uh they can get like you know the evac vehicles the proper evacuation vehicles up and get your get your tank pulled out of the back pulled out of there uh in time and you can go back to the depot and you can repair your tracks but like yeah you know it's um it's not like it is in video games like track repair i mean that, that goes the same for like anything like yeah like your turret ring gets fucked i mean dude, like, dude you're done like that's it <laughs> i mean you can't just like, for, the, for that entire battle, you're over with. And that's why, like, real-life war sucks so bad. <laughs> because you take all... You spend all this prep time. You have all this... You have years of training. All this prep time. You spent hours upon hours stocking ammo for your tank. Checking to make sure your road wheels had the right amount of grease in them. Oil levels. Fuel. You go through all your checks and balances. You do maintenance on your tank regularly. Your tank is in tip-top shape. All right, Commander. I'm ready to go. You go out into battle... You hit a mine, your track is your track is fucked, and then infantry come out and hit you with drones or anti-tank guided missiles, whatever, whatever, and you die. And then literally, like, Star Wars meme, like, years of academy training wasted. And that's why war fucking sucks. And, you know, you die, so you're done. There's no, there's no, uh, that's it. Or then, yeah, like, you go to battle, and you encounter a T-90, he takes a shot, disables your turret ring. I mean, God forbid you don't die from that, because, let's be honest, like, you probably would from just shrapnel. And, and, yeah, also, like, yeah, shrapnel going into your tank, and you're disoriented, your commander's disoriented, everyone in the tank is probably disoriented, and the other guy just lines up for his, another shot, and then that's it. It's over. Like, tank combat is quick, I would imagine, and probably brutal. Beautiful. Beautiful teamwork, Mr. Tiger. I still need to go get to this repair point. So I need to spawn in a plane during this match. And also, I need to keep get, getting, getting kills with the Enfield number 4 Mark 1. And I need to win this match. So hey, being in a tank right now is getting us towards winning the match, which is one of my objectives. You forgot to pre-oil the engine? You're so true, right? That, you know what? That may have been it. That may have been what killed us. That may have been the reason why we hit a mine and our tank was disabled and we died. Now, granted, tanks have a lot of systems nowadays for protection. You know, we have trophy, we have smoke, and we have things to, we have things to, we have, we have composite armor, so, like, yeah, one shot doesn't just instantly kill you. I mean, yeah, we have things to defend. But, like, generally speaking, there, yeah, there are a lot of ways to, as the military would call it, mission kill a tank. You mean APFSDS? I mean, APFSDS, APDS, it's the same concept. Just one of them has fins, and the other one doesn't. Although, to be fair, you could say, no, APFSDS is the, the tungsten rod. Whereas APDS is still like a conventional shaped round, it just has its sabo. So, okay, I guess you're right. Maybe maybe we're making maybe that that is a necessary pedantism. Um, but in in the context of the debate that we were saying of does the development of APDS affect the future of tank development? I think my argument remains because without APDS, there wouldn't be APFSDS. Because it's the, I mean, that's the same. It's the sabo that allows APFSDS to just be a rod of tungsten, and it works. Or de depleted uranium. I don't know how the Abrams is. I don't know how the Abrams is 
APVF SDS is, is constructed. I'm pretty sure it's it's a tungsten rod with a AP with it's a tungsten rod with a depleted uranium tip, or a tungsten rod with infused with depleted uranium. I, I forget. I don't know. I'm not a modern tank guy. If the Germans could have built the Rat 1000P, what would have happened in your opinion? It would have been destroyed. It would not have worked because it's just like way too massive. Um, it, it would have been way too massive, way too slow. It would not have been able to get over any bridges ever at all. It would have been incredibly maintenance intensive. Like, can you fucking imagine? Like, not only the sheer effort to build such a vehicle, and I think there's a reason why the Germans didn't, because they realized all this as well, or they just realized that they could not build it. They did not physically have the resources to build it. Um, but even if you did build it, could you fucking imagine, like, the fuel mileage on that thing? Or how much oil it would need? Like, holy shit. How often it's, like, bearings would need to be inspected for, like, turret travers and road wheels and all that. Like, god damn. Like, that's crazy. It would have been an incredibly ineffective fighting fighting vehicle. I love Hesh. Hesh is pretty cool. What's your opinion on the Leo 1 slash AMX 30 era of tanks? Because I feel they are cool because they are like speed equals protection. Yeah, I I personally am a fan of glass cannons. Like honestly, I think American tank destroyer doctrine in World War II like had it spot on. Now to be fair, in practice it didn't always work the best. Um, and there's a reason why, you know, they kind of abandoned it sort of. But I, I'm a fan of glass cannons. I love the idea of a tank having like, I, I think armor is not that important. Because of exactly what we just talked about. Like, even if you... I think it, it is rare enough that a shot ricochets off a tank. To add on top of that, the idea that even if you get hit, and even if it doesn't kill you instantly, if you get hit, and again, you lose track, or you lose turret ring, or whatever, like, you're pretty much done anyways, even if you have armor. And you could say, well, like, what if your track gets hit, but your gun is still up so you can be, like, a, a you know, a, a stationary pillbox. Like, there's still plenty of room for tanks that have been, you know, mobility killed or whatever. And, yeah, like, I, I guess you're right. And this is why my, my theory is probably not great. Also, that was a great miss by me right there. Um, and, yeah, this is why I'm a kid who sits in his bedroom and plays Battlefield Five, and why I'm not an actual military advisor of any kind. But, yeah, in my opinion, I think the glass cannon way is, like, actually a pretty good thing. Now, is it the best for, like the main tank of your army, eh, I think the rest of your doctrine really has to support that mindset. Like, yeah, like the idea that speed equals protection, so tanks go fast, and the entire army is built to recognize the fact that tanks go fast, and so therefore, like, we make it work. Um, but I think even if you have, like, a traditional MBT, I think it is worthwhile having something that is lightly armored, but, like, packs a real punch. And, and again, 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 like, I think in the modern day, in, in the world of firepower versus protection, I think in today's day and age, firepower has the upper hand. Like, I think our guns and our ammunition are just so fucking good that, like, yeah, like, I don't think a T90 could take a hit from the front from a 105. So at that point, you might as well get, you might as well get speed out of it. I thought my throat is getting... My throat is like actually getting like rubbed raw now from talking so much. I want to now. I want to know your honest opinion of Call of Duty Vanguard, the most horses game that you ever seen. Uh, I think the gun customization in COD Vanguard is obviously very cursed. However, quite fun, I will say. Obviously, you can make some really really fucked up things in that game, but like that's kind of cool. My problem is when you get things that like that would not have worked. Like I don't mind if it's like two things that never actually happened historically, but theoretically you could have done it. I don't actually mind that too much, as much as I complained about it in the World of Tanks video. But yeah, what I really have an issue with is when they take some either something either completely fictional and botch it onto a gun or a tank or whatever, or they tank some they take something that never was pursued, never really existed, um, or like was never meant to go onto that tank or gun and put it on there anyways. That's kind of crazy. I think that that's where like I have a problem, so to speak. But I've not played Call of Duty Vanguard. I've only seen videos about it, so I have I have no idea. 
I don't know if question was answered while I was gone, but what is the difference between the VK2003 and the Panther series? Let's find out. Let me Google real quick. VK, VK2003. Tank. Some like, pull up some like Indian movie. I think you mean the VK3302, by the way. Um, 3002. It's the tank from War Thunder, right? Like they just added this to War Thunder. Um, it's just a prototype. It's just Prototype Panther. Um, there were two different designs. Okay, yes, the VK3002. Ah, I see, yeah. Yeah, the VK3002 was just like the, the test designation for what would become the Panther. That was just like, that's just what they, that's just what they sort of called it, you know? VK is just Proto-Panther. Yeah, it is. Now, there were two designs for the, for the VK3002. There was the one design, there was the one submitted by MAN, and there was the one submitted by, fuck, somebody else. I forget who. Um, one of the designs was Panther, as we know it today, and one of them was basically a German copy of the T-34. Which, by the way, the, the, the Panther was a German copy of the T-34. Plus, also moving in the direction that Germany, like, kind of already wanted their tanks to go. The Panther was, like, the ultimate culmination of everything the Germans had learned so far in the war and wanted to improve on. Things that they had been testing since, like, the late 1930s that kept, like, ah, we keep, we keep putting interleave suspension on the Panzer IV, but, like, it's just not working. And then Panther, they were like, okay, finally we can do it. I mean, they did it on Tiger. That was really the first time they did it, but still. And I guess the half-tracks. Um... But yeah, pa Panther was like the fall. Panther was the full realization of like a lot of Germans' ideas, and also a lot of Germany's ideas, and also lessons that they had learned from the from the Soviets. You know, tandem charge warhead. I do know that. What if the front of the two was Hesh? Wouldn't stop the RA, but would damage regular. If you made the front of a tandem warhead Hesh. I don't know if it would work as well. Because I think, because like heat works because, yeah, it's, you know, an explosion and all that, but it's also fundamentally, you know, uh, propelling that superheated jet of copper into the armor. It is still like a kinetic penetrator, whereas Hesh is just straight up like blast energy. That, that does what it does. That makes it do what it do. And so if you're just relying on that pure blast energy, that might fuck up whatever your secondary warhead is behind your main warhead in that scenario. I think, you know, call me stupid, but I think there might be a reason why we've never seen hash tandem warheads. Or maybe they do exist out there. Maybe there is some, like, British experiment where they did it, and, uh, you know, I don't know. That guy braked at the perfect time. He's not there anymore, I bet. Yeah, he's gone back the other way. We know where he is, though. And he can't repair, so he's... Whoa. I missed again! Tiger, do something. Thank you, Tiger. All right, we gotta get the hell out of here. What's your opinion on the salmon with the railgun? What? You mean the Sherman with the railgun? That was a Spookston April Fool's video? That's not a real vehicle that was ever existed or tried or even like thought up of. I know this is not tank related, but more just general stuff. What is your favorite car or dream car? So my attainable dream car, I have two categories for this. I saw one person do this one time and I was like, oh, that's a really good idea. But to have an attainable dream car and an unattainable dream car. So like a dream car that like you actually could realistically get in your life. Like not something like super crazy outlandish, like a Bugatti or something. And then your unattainable dream car, which is yeah, like the million dollar car that you'll never actually ever to be able to afford. Or that you probably don't think you'll ever be able to afford. Um, my attainable dream car is a 2017 Chevy Camaro, black with white racing stripes. Um, 
I just like the Camaro. I think it's a cool fucking car. Um, that's the Sherman. Run away! My And that's like a car that I do believe I could get in my lifetime. And the 2017, um, 2017 model is just the model that I think looks really good. It doesn't look like too crazy futuristic like some of the newer ones. And it also doesn't look like, to be honest, the original, like the 2012 Camaro that came out, like the original remaster, um, kind of an ugly car sometimes. But... Yeah, so like a 2017, like 2018 model Camaro, that'd be cool. Um, and then my unattainable dream car is a 1969 Mustang, like the John Wick car. Like go go watch John Wick Chapter Two or whatever, and that car. I want that car. That's my unattainable. Like I'll, I don't think I'll ever be able to buy that car. I don't think I'll ever make enough money to do that. And also, to be honest, if I did ever get that much money, I would just use it to buy a tank. To be also totally honest with you i suppose actually another attainable dream car might be uh, a willie's jeep i think a lot about like if i would want to own a car or sorry own a tank one day obviously like it is a dream of mine unattainable dream tank would be like a centurion or a t55 or obviously like a sherman would be an unattainable unattainable dream tank but like to have some kind of like small world war ii historical like project vehicle a willie's jeep makes a lot of sense like they're a dime a dozen they're not that expensive you can find them everywhere parts are everywhere um like that would be a, something that one human being could feasibly buy an old beaten up rusty willy's jeep and actually restore it like that's that feels like something that i could actually do that or a deuce and a half a deuce and a half would also be a sick military vehicle to own and it would be so practical too because it's literally a fucking logi a military grade logi truck like that, that you could use that for anything. Going camping, going to a grocery store, buy as many groceries as you want and just throw them all in the back. Nobody's gonna, who's gonna stop you? It's a fucking military grade Logi truck. So yeah, I suppose you could throw like a Willys Jeep or a Deuce and a Half in like the dream car category. But like as a practical daily driver, I want just like a Camaro. If you do a video reacting to tanks from Fortnite, could I help you with it? Um, if you want to send me like footage or something, I will, I will take a peeky. I don't know about like, what do you mean by like, can you help? Like, how involved do you want to be? How how involved are you are you asking to be? <sighs> Hedge is best when it's spinning. Depends on the explosive. Yeah, or uh, yeah, D yeah spreads the explosive. What's up, Chandler and chat, Chandy Danny? Another BF5 gamer you know who to call. I'm probably going to end in the next, like, 10 minutes, probably. I keep saying that. Maybe after this match we'll end the stream, because I keep needing to end, but I'm not. Ed, I'm stream sniping. Thank you, cool Filipino guy. Can we get that guy banned in chat? We have now taken objective data. Why are people buying the Cybertruck when you get a T-34 for only 140k? Dude, that's what I'm saying. Edit, if I sent you a doormat that said, are those level four plates with a smiley face, would you take it? Uh, yeah, I would take it and then sell it on eBay. Because I have no use for such a thing. If we're going to be, like, totally honest with each other. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, man. That's just, uh, that's just how the cookie crumbles. I just watched that poor Ostwind, or um, Orbilwind, get totally strafe run by that plane. Poor guy. I knew there was a guy. I heard his. I literally heard his little feetsies, bro. I heard his little footsteps. I knew there was a. I knew there was a bad man. I knew there was a goober. And now we're at like 50 HP. Goof. What is your favorite tank that was a complete piece of shit? That's a... Well, the Ariette is probably a good contender. I don't know about a complete piece of shit. See, that's the thing, like, I don't think of many tanks as, like, complete pieces of shit. But, I mean, yeah, like, tanks that weren't very good that I actually really liked. That, or that I really like. Despite not being very good. I don't know. Probably like a... Hmm. 
have to think about that. Like tanks that like tank that wasn't good. So like my problem is that I would think of I, like I'm thinking of a tank, but then I imagine somebody before I say the name of the tank, I imagine someone in the comments being like, actually, like that tank served really well in this battle, that battle, this battle, that battle. It's like, yeah, there will always be exceptions. So like, I don't know, the BTs. Like, generally speaking, the BTs were not like that useful. Like, they were all right, but, you know, they were too lightly armored and they had a lot of problems and they had to develop the T-34s. Same thing with the T-26s. But like, I really like the BTs. Uh, pretty much any- honestly, if it has Christie suspension, there's a good chance that I like it, even though it wasn't very good. Where the fuck is this guy? He's coming around me. That guy's dead. I destroy him and his entire family lineage. Now, where did I get shot from over here? That's what I want to know. I killed my commander. Asshole. <sighs> Edit. Opinion on the Marines amphibious assault vehicle. I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard of it. A oh, big truck that is amphibious and carries troops. Well, that's an APC. That's not really my area of expertise. Also, do you tow missiles? What? So missiles are okay. I was like, is Edda being ceased IRL when he looked up? No, uh, cast IRL when he looked up. No, I looked up at, I have a poster above my uh, computer on my wall of a bunch of World War II tanks. And I like to look at it for inspiration because sometimes just saying like, like quick name, like name tanks. Like sometimes I, weirdly enough, like I get uh, stunned by that. It's like the kind of thing where um, you have so much freedom that you're actually like stunned by it. I'm gonna die here, by the way. This is where I die. Oh, he's upstairs now. I don't even know where that came from. I'm just gonna let myself die if I die here. That guy. Alright, we should be safe now, now that we're under the hill. For me, it's the American T-34. Yeah, like, the, yeah, that's actually a good point. Like, some experimental thing. Yeah, still, I would say something like the Christie T-4. That would probably be like one of my favorite tanks that like wasn't actually that good. Do you like tow missiles? I mean, yeah, they're cool. I'm, I'm, I'm naturally just more interested in World War II era technology. So, but I mean, they're cool. Am I within, like, the rearm? Yeah, there we go. I was about to say, I don't want to repair. I want to, like, rearm. Oh, I think we're going to lose this match, which, like, actually sucks because one of my objectives is to win this damn match. get up on that bridge. We're going to recap the bridge. Imagine a World War II tow missile. Tiger tank no more. Well, imagine heat. Tiger tank no more. You see my comment about helping with the Fortnite video? Yeah, you said starting a creative world and then you just fly around while I drive. Um, potentially. I don't know. I, I think a tank enthusiast reacts on Fortnite would be pretty far down on, on my list. 
Edda, opinions on the M901 I, uh, ITV. I do not know what that is. That is my opinion. That sounds like a modern thing, so therefore, high chance I have no clue what it is. Uh, yeah, B. Get myself out of order. Imagine a Sherman with a 76mm gun. Tiger tank no more. So fucking true, bestie. So we just found the uh, the blindest player in all of Battlefield 5. <laughs> Bro literally did not see a Panzer IV just chilling here. Uh... Chat, we, we're going to do a little trolling. You see? Good work. Objective Smiley face. I think this is my first time being recognized in Battlefield 5. I'm not gonna lie. Bro, I thought you were probably look like a prop. Yeah, that might have been it. I mean, that is probably the answer. Yeah, guy thought the dude thought I was a prop. But, um, alas, he is mistaken. Yeah, we gotta. Are we capping A right now? We are. Aw. Wholesome. Wholesome fan interaction. It is weird. It's actually, although, in a lot of ways, though, it's also not that weird. Being uh, recognized, you know? Like, people might ask, like, what is it like? But it's like, I don't, like, I don't know. Like, it just kind of happens. Like, I just, I'm not thinking about it. Like, I don't know. Just someone, someone knows me. It's definitely, like, when I see memes, that's one of the things that wakes me up and is like, holy shit, I'm a YouTuber. And then especially, like, other content creators or other areas of the internet that I have never touched, like, recognizing me. Like, it makes sense. Like, if I make a video about Battlefield Five, then it's like, okay, yeah, like, and someone says, oh, are you at a 320 in Battlefield Five? And it's like, okay, I get it. Like, you know, that makes sense. But if it's, like, like, Cone of Arcs Discord, and someone is like, Yo, like, Edit 320's new upload was amazing, da da da, and, like, posts it in, like, his Discord. Then it's like, whoa, like, that's a totally different YouTuber that I have nothing to do with, and people are talking about me there. That Those are the moments where I'm kind of like, holy shit, I'm, like, like, internet famous in a, in a very small, within a very small niche. I'm a, I am on my way to becoming a micro-celebrity. That's kind of, uh, that kind of stuff is a little, uh, wacky. And zany, and also a bit uncharacteristic. God dang, can we just hold on to a point for like three seconds? Our team cannot just like maintain ownership of a point to save our damn lives. <laughs> I met blinder players in War Thunder. Yeah, dude, go check out the War Thunder stream. We met like three or four of the most blindest people in the game it, of all time. Why would you do that to me? You scared the fuck out of me, dude. That tiger tank. Or was that a real... Did I just get shot at by a real thing? I can't tell if I actually just got shot at by now, right now, or if that tiger tank. Mr. Uh, Ultra Dragon Gaming just took a cheeky little pot shot at me. We're losing... Now we're losing B. Uh, tiger, stay at B and defend B. I'm gonna go back up to the bridge. Tiger, stay here. I'm gonna go up to B. Yo, see, now they're, they're already trying to take it back. Tiger, defend B. Or, sorry, defend A. Fuck, fuck, fuck. No, Tiger, stay at A. Stay at A. I'm gonna defend B. He's a goddamn tiger. He'll handle himself. I forgot how much subs Etta had when I subscribed. I mean, you know, 33,000 is not, like, crazy. It's more than I ever thought I would ever get. A lot more. Actually, it's uh, just about double what I ever thought I could ever achieve on YouTube. Ever. Um, 
I mean, yeah, like, even at this point, like, this YouTube channel has so far beyond exceeded my expectations. Like, when I just started it because I wanted to, and then all of a sudden, I mean, you know, here I am, <laughs> streaming three times a week and doing all that. All right, I may have been one of the blindest players in Battlefield 5 just for a second there. Ow! Under 10k when I sub, yeah. Can't wait for Tankman review of Flan's mod pack in Minecraft. Unironically, that would be such a good fucking video idea. You're so right. Okay, come on. Cap this point. Can we hold on? Are we st are we losing A? Okay, good. Tiger, hold A. I'll hold B. We just need our other team to hold D. How do we own G? And D, but we were, like, losing A and B. Well, I guess that makes sense, like, other sides of the map, but... We just have to defend. We gotta hold fast. Hold fast, team. Whoa. Tiger, keep your focus, buddy. I know you want to troll for the stream, but... Actually, no, I'll give you the points, man. Fuck me. You get those points. You know. Defend A. Stay there and you get that little XP boost. Stay on A. Defend that shit with your life. I'm switching to AP ammunition here, in case a tank rolls up. Thankfully, there are so few people in this game that, you know, a couple players can actually make a big difference holding a point. Yep. I was waiting for that to happen. At least I killed that guy. Oh, you're an engineer, thank god. Oh, you are the best. Please, just give me a little little touch up. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Should we push forward and take E? The more the merrier, right? I feel like that's going to be a mistake, though. I don't want to get B taken out from underneath me. Nah, 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 stay at A. Nah, go, go, go defend A. I, I changed my mind, I don't want to do that. It's a bad idea. We've got, we've got a good thing going. We had a good thing going. But no, you. You with your pride and your ego. Fun fact, there's a tab for War Thunder on Rule 34. That honestly does not surprise me at all. But what is it? Is it tanks? Is it like anamorphic tanks? Like, Because I do know... Sadly, I do know that is a category, like, that exists. Like, anthropomorphic tanks with, like, arms and legs and, uh, other necessary bits. Uh, to create pornography of those things. So, I know that exists. Is that the War Thunder category on Rule 34? Is it similar to that? dangerous right here. He's behind that pillar. No, he's not. He was behind the next pillar. Oh, he jumped off the bridge. Cool. Good. He jumped off a bridge. Problem solved. They're coming to you now over at A, Tiger. Hold your fucking ground. Fuck. Soldiers, we are losing objective data. Dude, one infantry guy was equivalent. I guess I'm only one dude inside this tank. It's a waste of ammo, but I don't want this. I don't want these sandbags here. People can hide behind them and use them to kill me. How many rounds of MG ammo do I have? Enough. Teammate behind me died? Please just hold out, friends. Just hold out. 
We can do this. Taking a massive risk. Fuck. Get back in, get back in, get back in! a scout so I don't have to worry about him that guy is a support so I don't have to worry about him too much ah tanks so true oh no too much AA tanks I think is that guy saying these grenade launchers he can't kill me with these grenade launchers I'm not too worried about him no one behind me no dude what a comeback this is gonna be this is gonna be such an epic comeback that guy's a sniper I'm still gonna kill him um yeah, no, unironically, I'm not worried about that. That uh, Grenadier, he can't, he literally can't kill me. His grenades, he can't do enough damage with those to kill me. I'm not worried about him. He's back there, though. Oh, there he is. He's so cute. I wonder if I can catch him. This will be a fun little game to play, won't it? Come here, buddy. Oh, I just missed him. There we go. Oh, he had my teammate to kill, so he, uh, he thought he was safe if he peeked a little longer. Than he did otherwise. I think my back is safe. We lost D and G, but now we have F. That's a risky point to hold. I hope we can hold it. Because, God, we are so close. We are so, so, so close. Oh, wait, we're taking E. Oh, shit, let's go. I'll close that gap. Now run this over, because fuck all this. I don't care for none of this. Oh, come on. I can destroy this. Come on. Boom. Oh. Hello. Not gonna lie, I may not have seen that guy. If I was any dumber. Ooh. Oh, well now we're losing E. That's not good. Is there a tank? Nope, just a bunch of infantry. I don't like yeah, I don't I don't like this at all. This is not good for me. Oh, I literally hit that guy in the face with a tank round. I've only got four rounds left. Ow! I did not see that guy. Alright, we've got infantry with us. That's nice. Oh fuck, we're losing F. We have to capture. We have to go. We have to go. We have to capture now. 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 Kill that guy. Cool. Keep moving. Keep moving. We have to capture F. We have to capture F right now. Or E. My turret ring is out. Come on, boys. Come on. Fuck. I need repairs. I need repairs. Bad. Oh. Yeah! Oh, shit, that was close. Woohoo! Oh, nice. Wow. Sorry, chat. I was not paying attention to chat. I was not. Um, I'm sorry. I was locked in, dude. Literally, I was locked in. <sighs> Damn, son. We got that. This was, uh, yes, I'd like to return to the main menu. I defended A. Thank you so much, Wa. Your, uh, <laughs> your efforts literally, like, saved. What happened? OBS. Hello? Stream? Is everyone okay? Stream? Okay, good. Whew. <laughs> yeah, uh, OBS, okay, sorry, OBS just did like a ding, ding disconnected, and I was like, oh, and I think the last time that happened, the stream, like, crashed and died, so, whew, okay, well, hey guys, I think that should about wrap it up for this, um, hold on, let me get my, uh, hi, 
I was giving good vibes. Yeah, you were. This was a good vibes. OBS just had a stroke. Yeah, just a little bit. What's up, Tank Commander? You have a question in chat? I'm not going to go for too much longer. I'm getting really hungry. In that background thing of a tank with beer on its gun, what tank is that? It's a Leopard 2. It is uh, a German promotional video for the pan for the Leopard 2. Um, and like the, their like whole gimmick was that it, it the stabilizer is so good it can hold a stein of beer on the barrel. That was fun, Edda. Sorry I was really bad on the ground outside of the tank. I Honestly, man, I didn't really notice. <laughs> and one of the four like camo... Those four camo tanks jumping around in the snow? Yeah, those are leopards as well. Yeah, you're really bad at spotting leopards. Um, is that... Where was that? I can rewind through this, by the way, in case you guys didn't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, these are leopards. These are leopard twos. They're leopards. You silly... You silly goose. You silly goober. Well, for me, it's three and a half clock past midnight. Damn, son. Yeah, go to sleep. Get the hell out of here. For me, it's 8.51. It's almost 9 p.m. I need to get back to work editing. I need to get back. I need to finish the next upload. I think the promotional video one was a 2 to a 2A4. Maybe. Over-engineered beer carrier. I mean, that's basically what a tank is. Why carry your weapon when your weapon will carry you? Or why carry your beer when your beer will carry you? Am I right? 2.50 in the morning here? Yeah, y'all gotta y'all gotta get the fuck out. Thanks so much for coming out to stream. I, we're, we are, I'm, I'm in an... I'm, Sorry, but I'm not going to uh, start an entire, like, three-hour-long conversation again about tanks or anything else um, in this post credits sequence. Like, we gotta go, I gotta go, you gotta go. So, thank you guys so much for coming to stream tonight. This was just, I just wanted to, I wanted to grind some Battlefield 5 today and figure I might as well do it on stream because, like, that would be fun. Glad we got some chatters, that was cool. Um, glad, we got, glad we got chatters involved. Uh, that was always fun. I didn't, I didn't want to do, like, a... Um, like a thing where I was in a VC with people and like all this stuff. It just, it would have been chaotic. I wanted much more chill vibes for today. So that's just kind of what I did. But um, yeah, thanks guys so much for coming. There will be a video. I'm editing it currently. It's like 95% done. So it, it'll be out within the next like two or three days. Um, it'll be out for the patrons first though. That's the only thing is like, I have to maintain that. So the patrons will get it. And then like two days later, y'all will get it. But there's videos down the pipeline. So I've already broken my like every Saturday upload schedule that I was kind of unofficially maintaining. But I still, um, I'm still keeping up relatively um, regular uploads. So that's been fun. But anyway, yeah, um, stay happy, stay tanking. Good night for a lot of you. Good morning for some of you. And uh, goodbye. Thanks. If you need to talk to me or want to ask me any more questions, just ping me on Discord. Oh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Um, subscribe to the live channel or the, the main channel. Uh, join the Patreon. Do all that fun stuff. And um, yeah. Good night, friends. Bye-bye. Yay. Yes, can I just do like the most like, yay. Yay. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm